Hey everyone, it's Erin from Erin Bun Paints. Welcome back to another acrylic painting tutorial. Today I'll be teaching you step by step how to recreate the beautiful painting beside me. It's called Teal Blooms. I use five different paint colors today. I have red, yellow, phthalo blue, black, and white. And I only use two different paint brushes today. I have the large flat brush and the medium round brush. So that means I'm missing the detail brush. If you'd like to use it, that's totally fine. As usual, this footage was taken from a recent live stream of mine. Viewers from all over the world attend and they're able to ask me questions if they need any clarifications on the steps or if they need any help with their painting. And of course, they're able to interact with each other in chat and paint all together at the same time. If you wanna join in live on my next painting tutorial, you have two options. You can check me out on Twitch where I stream both my painting tutorials and regular painting content throughout the week, twitch.tv slash paints. Or you can check me out on Facebook where I stream my painting tutorials on Facebook Live facebook.com slash Aaron Bun Paints. Otherwise, you can check me out on Instagram, instagram.com slash Aaron Bun Paints. And if you're looking for my past tutorials, they're actually all here on YouTube as well. You're already here, youtube.com slash Aaron Bun Paints, but you can go check out my channel, check out all the past videos, and subscribe if you wanna be notified when the next tutorial is posted. All right, let's get started. Enjoy the tutorial. So even if you have just a little bit of white, you can use some water on your brush. So I'm just uh, dipping my brush in water, grabbing white paint, and I'm just sloughing that everywhere. You don't need to go um, one particular way. You could go up and down. You could go side to side. All of that works. And I'm applying that everywhere. So again, this is more of just a nice uh, wet base that we're starting with. Wow, lightning, lightning, lightning. Okay, got yeah, cheers, cheers, cheers. First time watching from Oklahoma. Excellent. Keep applying, I'm gonna turn on that lamp. I think that might actually help us a little bit. Maybe, oh, that one, that's nice. So again, you can keep dipping in your water as well. This is really more so just to get a nice wet base. So it's not as much about covering the complete canvas with a large coat of white. It's more so just making a nice wet base. So keep dipping in your water if you need to. If you're like me and you're low on white, I just wanna save paint. You can see I'm putting it everywhere, again, in whatever brush strokes I feel like. Whatever's working. Crash, bang, boom, do you hear that thunder? See, if I wasn't so worried about power and electronics, I'd be loving this right now. I would just be sitting down looking outside just going, ooh, I love this stuff. Dipping in my water again, grabbing a little more white, moving that around. So I'll give another like half minute or so, so just keep applying that. Again, we wanna go a little quick because the whole point of this is to provide a nice wet background to blend onto. We want to do a nice kind of wet on wet blend to begin with, just to get a nice soft blend at the start. And then we'll start to uh, do some dry brushing. Crash, bang, boom, oh my gosh. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can get more white paint here. Whoops, broke another lid. <laughs> So keep in mind everybody too, you're more than welcome to change up colors, especially this painting. I was kind of expecting this would be a very easy one to change up colors with. Um, again, the person who requested it had specific color requests and I was happy to oblige because I love my teals and mints as most of you know. But yeah, if you have more of like a warm tone room that you want to hang this in or you just have a favorite color other than teal and mint, change it up very easy. Even the background too, but I'll lead you through this nice kind of beige 
kind of like uh, neutral background. Ooh. Okay, I'm gonna teach the next step and I'm gonna run out to my patio because I have uh, something out there I might wanna move. All right, so we're gonna start with a nice beige. We have uh, white with kind of some yellow and a tiny bit of red in there. That's what makes this nice kind of very soft beige. Rachel, love hearing thunder. We can hear the thunder sounds. Ooh. All right, so on my plate, everybody, I have lots of white. I'm gonna put just a little bit of yellow and a little bit of red. And beige, again, super, super pale color. So I'm just gonna grab a little bit of yellow here. You can see, swirl that into my white. Mix that in. And then you saw I just grabbed a tiny amount of red as well. So it's almost like you're making a super, like super duper pale orange or pale peach, however you want to think of it. You're grabbing a little bit of yellow, a little bit of red, and using lots of white. See how subtle it is. It's like not at all even close to like a bright orange or a bright, again, peach. It's supposed to be very subtle to begin with. If you want to alter this in any way, again, add a little more yellow to make it a little more yellow toned or red to make it a little warmer and red toned, kind of pinky. But I'm just trying to get any regular beige, really. Uh, okay, and I'm going to start to kind of move that both up and down and kind of side to side. So I'm going to cover most of this like this, um, but I guess what I'm doing is I'm leaving some gaps here and there. So I'm not worried about covering the whole thing. It's not like I'm creating a whole base layer with this beige. I'm just kind of doing some crisscross motions. I see the light is reflecting a little funny there. So let me hold it like this and I'll show you. Up and down, side to side, up and down, side to side. It's like we're making a little like crisscross pattern. Very soft though, you can see how soft I'm starting. I'm kind of waiting until I uh, hit my brighter colors to add some uh, darkness to it. Trying a light adjustment there. Okay, good, it's not reflecting as much, as much. Wow, and just like that, I think the storm is mostly over. Okay, so keep crisscrossing again. I'm gonna whip to my patio just to make sure something didn't fall there. I heard kind of a crash, so I'll be right back. isn't very good. It's kind of blown over, but it's propped up again, so we're fine. <laughs> Nothing fell otherwise, just my okra plant. It's a little wilty now. Oh dear. Okay, I'm just going to keep streaking on some of this beige. How's everyone doing? We need a few minutes. Okay, no worries, Subly, all good. I'm still adding anyway. Again, this background is nice. We can go kind of nice and slow at it. I found that the wet on wet blending was more so for this first step, just to get more of a soft base. And then the other streaks you can kind of see, they're a little more rough in texture. So that'll be more of a dry brush or, um, yeah, just not as much blending, I would say. It's more so just applying, kind of streaking and scraping it on. So we have lots of time for this. We can just play around with the background as much or as little as you like. How's everyone else doing here? Da, 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 da. Everyone loves thunderstorms. This is so cool. Thunderstorm club. We can hear thunderstorms. Love thunder. Christine, will we be able to view this later on? I cannot paint right now. Is it on your video tab? Yes, Christine. So all of my tutorials, I always say for anybody who can't attend live. Uh, so they will be on Facebook and then they eventually move over to my YouTube channel. I just uh, 
do a tiny bit of editing before I move them to YouTube. So they'll live on Facebook for a moment and then they'll move to YouTube. You might notice Fridays is still on Facebook, for example. I have not edited that one quite yet, so I'm hoping to do that tonight or tomorrow and probably get both of these up at the same time. So, uh, Christine, follow this Facebook page. You can check the videos tab as you suggested. Otherwise, I'd recommend uh, subscribing to my YouTube page, youtube.com slash Erin Bun Paints, because uh, that's where like all the tutorials are right now as well. You can go back to like two months ago and paint everything that I've painted. So try there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, grays would be pretty. Yeah, Teresa, I actually saw a lot of kind of like teal and gray combinations online when I was looking at kind of uh, inspiration, and uh, they looked beautiful. I'm just really into these warm tones right now. I don't know, these beiges and like browns and stuff, caramel colors, so I just kind of moved over to that for this one. I missed the beginning. Did she put white or, uh, or first on water? Barb. Oh, Manjeet's helping you. Excellent. White and water. Yes. Barb, it was white and water, exactly. Sharon's ready to go. Hi, watching today, great to see you. Oh, thanks, Anita. Nice to see you, too. Yay! Sharon, thunderstorms terrify me, getting dark here in Peterborough. Oh, oh, stay safe, Sharon. Keep all the lights on and everything, make it nice and bright. Uh, Oriana, thunderstorms and lightning is my biggest fear. Oh, no! A few of you are saying that. Oh, give each other a big virtual hug. <laughs> Get all your lights on, keep it nice and bright. Have a nice little cup of tea or something, nice and warm. Wrap in a nice blankie. Just get comfy. Just get comfy. Spuds. Mmm, okra. Yeah, um, I'll talk a bit more about my okra plant, but I'm not really succeeding at it right now. <laughs> Maybe let's say one more minute. One more minute on this beige in case you're still going. I saw Sharon had her thumbs up. Just want to make sure we're all on track here. Some of you might be rushing out to your... <laughs> door areas and stuff to check on your things as well because of the storm. Again, just like that, I think it's uh, pretty much gone. So that was short-lived. I want to show you another preview of the background here. You froze here, had to reset. Okay, yeah, if it ever freezes, just try refreshing. Um, and then if it doesn't work, it might be something on my end. But I'm still alive. I'm still here. Hi. Good thing my place is not storming, though. Oh, good, Ariana. Yeah. Just safe for now. Texture. Yeah. There's lots of texture in this background. All right, I'm gonna go on to just another shade of the same color, essentially. So you can see, again, we stick to beiges, kind of like browns, I would say maybe like caramels if you wanna throw in some caramel colors. So what we're pretty much doing is we're just taking the same color, which is beige, and we're just altering it a little bit and then applying more streaks. So I'll call this more of like a nice light brown, what we're mixing next. Uh, you can go right on top of your previous beige or make a new pile, whatever you like. If you want to save beige, then you can make a new pile, but I won't be using beige after this personally. So I'm just going to grab a little more red, a little more yellow, and just add tiny amounts to that pile until I get more of like a nice light brown color. Again, I feel like these browns, everyone calls these colors something a little different. Some might kind of consider it more of like a light peach color. Actually, it is kind of more of a peachy color. Like, it could really be a lot of things. See that? Like, what would everybody call that? You know? It could be a dark beige. <laughs> it could be a light brown. It could be moving on to a peach. It's kind of like how you pair it with other colors, right? It could fit in any of those categories. But again, if you want to achieve this color, I'm just putting a little more red, a little more yellow. That's really all there is to it. Mm-hmm. So essentially just darkening up what we had. Hype, 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 yeah. Big time hype for Volcano Blade, yeah. Okay, so I've got that ready on my brush. And at this point, your background might be a little wet, but it's probably getting a little sticky and dry. So again, great, great. We can have a little bit of dry brushing and a little bit of wet on wet blending. I'd say for this, I'm going in a little softer with my pressure. I'm not pressing down super hard. I'm just kind of lightly allowing the bristles to graze across as I go up and down and as I go side to side. So again, you might see that you have some smoother strokes here because it's wet on wet blending. And then you might get some strokes that have more of this texture that's not showing up super well. Let me try and find a better spot here. Texture. I love my texture. See that one there. So. You can see it wasn't a smooth stroke. My bristles grabbed a little bit at the canvas and the canvas grabbed a little bit of paint off of it. 
kind of create this rough look. And that's exactly what I want. I want a little bit of both right now. Some nice smooth strokes and some nice uh, rough looking strokes. So you can see I'm just streaking this on top. Um, I'm not really looking at where I'm going here. I'm not really planning out where these are. You can start to maybe think about filling in some white gaps. I do try and uh, fill in as many white gaps as possible. But it is kind of nice to leave some here and there because then that way you get lots of different tones and lots of different, uh, yeah, crisscross looks, you know? The white kind of helps with the crisscrossing because it adds uh, that light background so you can kind of see through and around the streaks here. Once again, I always recommend looking straight at your canvas. You can see my streaks are sometimes a little bit tilted, maybe tilted this way, that way. <laughs> uh, looking straight at the canvas would help with that just because I'm looking from the side. It's a little harder. You, you should try it one time and you'll know what I mean. It's, it's way more of a challenge to try and get a nice like straight horizon line or a straight up and down vertical stroke when you're looking from the side. It's a whole different look at these. They're all <laughs> tilting down. But also that's kind of the beauty of this background because it's so abstract. I am not making a water line or a horizon line today. I'm just making a nice streaky background. So whatever. It's no problem if some of them are a little tilted see that getting like this nice stitching effect almost. Sharon, a bit more wine, I won't care about thunder. That's a oh, good solution. <laughs> I have my comfy solutions. Wine is a comfy thing as well. I could imagine being curled up in a nice little blanket with a little glass of wine while it's thunderstorming. See, that's more like my dream though, <laughs> versus you're just like coping. <laughs> Works for everybody. And then Joanne, where are the thunderstorms happening? Joanne, um, I'm in Southern Ontario and I believe most who are commenting right now are. So like anywhere around Toronto area, North, I'm West of Toronto. A few of them are East Toronto. So all around there. We, uh, just for context, we all, well, I think most of us got some sort of a tornado warning just on our phones a few, uh, about half an hour ago. So we're all just kind of like watching outside in excitement but also fear a little bit so yeah again I love thunderstorms that's why I said excitement but it's not exciting that there could be a thunderstorm or a tornado rather no 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 so you see how it's just starting to just nicely fill up I'm just trying to not make it too too bold yet I like this nice soft pastel look I'll give another minute or two and then uh, we'll go on to another color Ooh, chicken is live now. Yeah, for tier two, yes. I might move him to tier one because I have another tier one emote available right now and I don't have one ready to go broke, so I might quickly move it after this. Hey, direct, oh, hey, Twitch, watch this. Look at this command I made. Ah! Go wild, chat. <laughs> Cut a while in here. And we are going to get hit around supper time. Okay, yep. A lot later than us. Again, it's pretty much done here. It's, it's looking really gray and spooky out, but no more rain, no more wind. So there goes that. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> I don't think my power is going to go out considering that. So that's fantastic. We did it. Dang. Yay. Hello. Hi, life. So everyone, life is the one I'm collaborating with later. I was just talking earlier about our uh, Bob Ross activity life. She's here. Shout out everybody you want. Ooh, I'm in North Toronto. Oh, wow, and you're not getting hit with anything at Oriana, huh? Maybe it's on its way, because I think it was coming from, like, northwest area and kind of swooping down. So you're next. Careful. <laughs> Again, just get prepared. <laughs> Victoria, Orangeville and raining hard. Yep, that's, that makes total sense. I think it's kind of in that same swoop that I saw, Victoria. All right, let's go on to another color. So again, and feel free, you can do any variations of these colors you want as well, get inspired, do your own thing. Um, I'm gonna go on to more of like a caramel color now, so you can see how it's just a little bit different. I'd call this more of a golden kind of caramel tone, and I'm just gonna do the exact same thing, just kind of streaking it on in that nice kind of vertical, horizontal pattern, okay? All right, so I'm gonna go back to my paints here. I might need a little more white, I can't tell yet. 
But for this caramel, I'm going again back on that same little pile here. So just maybe adding a little more white just to grab a little more paint. This time I'm going to add majority yellow, a little bit of red. So same kind of idea, but I want this again to be kind of a caramel tone. So it will be a little bit brighter. This is too bright. I'm going to dim that down. But uh, point is, it's going to be brighter than we've uh, made yet. And it's going to be majority yellow tone versus uh, red. So I'm grabbing more yellow than red, mixing it on top of a white. I'm going to grab more white so I dim that down a little bit. Mine is a little too bright. Oops. I might need a third bottle here. I think both of these are a little too empty right now. Let's see. Alright, I'm going in the old stuff here. This is an old bottle of white, but it'll work. Different brand, wow. It still works, it's still paint. There we go. Okay, let me show you. And then to make it more of the caramel tone, so right now you can kind of see it's more of like I would call this a golden yellow. It's a little bright for my liking, and I was going for more of a caramel tone. And I found adding just a smidgen of black gives you that nice caramel tone because it kind of like burns the golden yellow into more of a caramel. You're kind of like burning sugar when you make caramel. So that's what we're doing here, grabbing a little bit of black, just a tiny bit. Like you, I don't know if you saw, I took it on just the very corner of my brush and mixed it in. You can see it kind of like, it just dirties it up. You see, it makes it more of a nice caramelly color. I'm going to grab maybe a little more yellow, a little more red. It's all about just playing around till you get a shade you like. Again, no pressure to copy the exact shades. It's more so just creating different beige tones here. See that? So it's a little less bright now. See, it's a little more, it's like a light caramel color, I would call it. Yeah. Okay, so this is probably going to be the biggest pop of color yet. See, it's a little brighter compared to everything else. But I love it. Again, you can see how all these colors kind of go together. They're all yellow, peach beige tones. This is applying, applying very, very dry because my canvas is now almost completely dry. So again, we're getting whoops, that nice rough texture everywhere. See those edges? That's exactly what I want. So if anyone's seeing that and they're kind of like, am I messing things up? You're not. It's all good. It's all good. I'll catch up on chat as I'm doing this next step here. Joanne, oh yikes, tornadoes. Yeah, yeah, it's it's rare for us to get any sort of warning like that. So honestly, I saw that on my phone and I was like, oh no. <laughs> Again, just, just my power. I just don't want my power to come up. I need to get a generator or something so I'm not scared of that. <laughs> Is this the last color for the background? Sharon, uh, good question. I would say I make one more brown. I feel like we still don't have kind of this brown here. It's a little darker. I think I used a little more black in this one to make it closer to the brown range. So I would say one more after this one. Good question. So yeah, if you're wondering about how much to fill this up, you still have probably one more to go after this. And I can leave that up to you too, in terms of if you feel like you still have space after the next color, you can always mix a fifth color. One, two, three, yeah, four, five. I'm pretty sure we're on our third right now. Or if maybe you like it after this color, you do not have to make the last color as well. So if you just like having kind of three tones messing around, then same thing. But yeah, I'll be using one more. See, and my, my lines are kind of tilty. Not worried, not worried. No. Heather, oh hey Heather, what's up? We are in Tornado Alley now in Barry Angus area. Yeah, Heather, I was just talking about this. We, uh, we got a, uh, oh, I got a message saying talk louder. Hello. Um, yeah, I was just saying we all got some sort of a phone uh, notification. That's pretty rare for us, isn't it? <laughs> Joanne, this is my first time watching you. I'm really enjoying it. Excellent. From Alberta. Oh, again, early for you, too. Thanks for tuning in in the morning. What a nice way to start your day. Glad you're enjoying. Hey, Mish, what's up? Hey, Erin, I'll do this one later. No worries. Stay safe and bury, Mish. We were all just talking about the uh, crazy weather warnings we're getting right now. So uh, stay safe there. I heard it was pretty much in the middle of the storm right now. So hopefully you're good. Oh, hey, Sarah. Hi. Can't do it today. I'm packing from camping trip. Oh, yeah, you went away. Hoping you do this one soon. No problem. Looks beautiful. Compliment the trailer interior. Ooh, beautiful. Yeah, all the nice beigey tones. I feel like this is a very warm, warm kind of like earthy background for sure. And then you can change the flower colors if you want to keep it earthy as well. 
just started to pour. Okay, okay. Yeah, no worries, Sharon. Oh, what's up on Twitch here? Love the Bob quote. Yes! Yeah, feel free. You can, You guys can all use it. I'm just, uh, I put it there for if anyone needs a little, little Bob inspiration, you know, it's always there for a nice little quote. Yay! 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 Shoutouts for everybody! They are tilty. Do not panic! Yes! I'm trying not to. My A-type personality brain says panic, and I'm saying, no, it's just the background. No mistakes, just happening. There you go. <laughs> I'm sure that quote is in there. I copied about 50 quotes for that command, so I'm sure you'll hit it eventually. <laughs> okay. Heather, we've had about 20 minutes of Rolling Thunder. Pretty spooky. Okay. I would say mine only lasted about 10. It was very short-lived, but it was very windy for that short-lived moment, so... <laughs> Mish, yeah, all good, but it looks like it will storm all day. Yeah, I'm surprised that it's letting up already. Maybe there's more coming, but I saw that it was going to like 4 or 5 p.m. here, so I'm not sure. I'll just keep my eye out and hope for my power. It's all it's all good so far. Barb, watching from Winnipeg. I'm slow moving this a.m., so we'll watch. Yeah, no worries, Barb. That's how a lot of people do it. They like to tune in live. You can chat at the same time. Ask your questions now if you have any, and then that way you're all ready for uh, when this is up later. Yeah. Nice for your bedroom. Great. I, that's kind of what I, th I think this is going to be one that you guys want to like hang up because it's a nice like simple bold piece. All right. So I was just saying to Sharon earlier, we have kind of one more, maybe call this like a taupe color, taupe, medium brown, anything around there is again, kind of the darkest color you're seeing. Okay. So for that one, we're going back to this pile here. I keep using the same pile guys. Again, if you need to do different piles, that's okay. I'm gonna add a little more white to it just to grab more paint in there. I'm going back to adding probably even amounts of red and yellow, just a little more of them. So then we get more of a medium tone. So it's going to look, I would say this is going to look a little more on the peachy realm or like kind of like a super light orange or something like that. And then the key is to make it more of what I would call a taupe or a medium to light brown. Once again, we wanna grab a little more black Oh, where is it? There it is. Tiny bit, mix it on top. Mix it in. And that'll kind of darken it again, kind of dirties it up a little bit so it looks a little more on the brown side, I would say. Again, you don't need to worry about making exact colors here. It's more so what you like. If you kind of like the tone and you think it matches, that's going to work out great. I would call this more of a taupe. Everyone sees colors differently, I think, or just like interprets them differently. I believe. So again, you could call this a variety of things. I think it's kind of like a taupe color. All right. And same, same thing. Look at that. Here we go. Ooh, so see that compared to everything else, a little darker. I would say this is more on the brown side or taupe side. And again, you can kind of look for gaps if you want to help kind of cover those up. I'm still brushing nice and soft. So I get some texture, brush a little harder if you need a little more paint coming off. And again, really wherever you feel. You can fill in gaps if you need to. You can pile this on top as well. You can obviously see that I'm crisscrossing, but excuse me, if you need to make kind of like, or want to try and make a new tone of color, kind of brushing lightly on top of the previous color will do that. So play around as you like. Oh, I'm sorry. And Sharon, I will be adding white on top. I guess I wasn't considering white like another color, but I do brush white on top as a final step. So sorry. But I assume you were asking because you were wondering to cover gaps. So I would still use this to cover the majority of your gaps and just to make it look a little more full. And then the white is just kind of an extra little step on top. And just to note, I mean, if you're not really a fan of the dry brushing look, if maybe it's looking a little too scratchy and dry for you, you could always just dip your water into some white or dip your brush, not your water, <laughs> dip your brush into the white and watery paint. Kind of use that to smooth things out a bit. You can just brush over top of any freshly applied streaks and that'll help smooth them out. So try that wherever you want, if you need, but I'm going to mostly do just the dry brushing. So yes, again, as a clarification, we will do one more, one more background color. It's just going to be white on top. I'll show you. I really like putting a few little dry strokes of white. I think it just brings the white a little bit back up on top and just kind of uh, lightens it up a bit. 
Okay. Watching from Fredericton, New Brunswick. Excellent. Welcome, Anne. Heather, Barry and North are getting hit super hard. KWGK not getting the violent storms. Oh, interesting. So that's me. That's me. All right. And Oriana, you're good too. Huh. So maybe it's just kind of sticking a little more north. Interesting. So you got friends in Barry, etc. Keep your eye out. Go Central Ontario. <laughs> Again, I have like connections everywhere. So it's, uh, I feel like I'm like always everywhere with all of these things. Ashpreet is having milk and puff pastry. Oh, cheers. That sounds delicious. All right, what's going on here? Bun and Grove Bob. <laughs> Wait, how did you do that? Life with a little uh, hand by the bun. What is that? What the heck? How'd you do that? Weird. What is it? All right, I'll give it another quick minute and then we're just gonna put white on top. Oh, welcome Raiders, hello, hello. Oh, Yummy Rocks, of course you're behind it. Hello, my friend. Teep Trick Contours, hello. Thanks for bringing your friends over here. Welcome, welcome, guys. Life, would you mind shouting him out? Him or her, Cheap Trick, thank you. Thank you so much. Team Trick, how was your uh, stream? What were you up to? Yummy is amazing. I know. Were you sketching maybe? I know Yummy. <laughs> how are you guys doing this to the bun? <laughs> so just for those who just joined in here with the raid, um, I'm just doing an acrylic painting tutorial. So I'm just going to do another step and I can chat a little more and uh, I'll kind of go back and forth between doing that. All right, those who are following along with the painting, one last step for the background. Again, my mistake, I almost forgot it. We're just doing a little bit of white as the last step. And I know it seems kind of counterproductive because we have white kind of here, but you can see it gives a little bit of a different look if you streak the white right on top. It's just a nice little soft, oh, not with black though. It's a nice little soft addition. It's just grabbing little amounts of white on your brush, on a nice clean brush. Again, no black paint, hopefully. You can see it just creates kind of a nice transparent white a little bit. It kind of softens up some things. So if you were in that club of thinking that uh, things look maybe a little bit harsh or a little bright, this will be the step for you. You can just grab little amounts of white and just brush on top. And I only do this a little bit. You kind of saw in my example here, you don't see too much white going on. I would say it's mostly those beiges and browns. So again, up to you, however much or however little you like. This will be the last step for the background. All right, so again, those who just uh, joined, again, welcome readers. This is uh, what we're painting today, what I'm trying to replicate. So I created this a few days ago and I'm uh, moving everyone through step by step. So a lot of people are painting along with me today. Some are just kind of watching. You can do either or, whatever you want. Or get creative with other mediums, get some pencil crayons on, out, get inspired, get some markers watercolors, anything like that. It's all good. So everyone following, I'll give you a minute or two just to make sure you can like look at your background, see if you want to add anything. If you need to go back to certain colors, the order doesn't really matter. So if you need to re-add, you're more than welcome to. All right. Hello. It was great. We were streaming a hypnosis session. <gasps> wow! Sorry, I assumed you were into art just because you're streaming or um, rating an art stream, but a oh, cool. So Facebook, and for context, I'm streaming on both Twitch and Facebook right now. Facebook. Um, I just got rated, so that means somebody kind of brought over all their viewers to my stream on Twitch by a certified hypnosis. <laughs> wow! So cool, hypnotist, excuse me, mispronunciation. He was doing hypnosis, a hypnosis session. That's wild. All on Twitch, amazing. Certified hypnotist and she doesn't, or she does hypnosis sessions. Wow, I'll be checking you out later for sure. Whoops. I'm gonna save your name in my tab here and uh, give you a call later on. <laughs> There we go. Yeah, just because I'm in the tutorial, I don't want to do that quite yet, but I will, I will. Yeah, very interesting, guys. Wow, check them out. I used to do that once upon a time, but it got really scary at the client one time, so I stopped. Oh my gosh. 
definitely interesting. I write a new session every week, and I love art. Love that you're teaching people to paint. Oh, thank you so much, Cheap Trick. I see now the connection. Ooh, Twitch has music. Oh, oh it's actually the same, uh, Heather. It's a, it's all coming from the same microphone, so I don't know if maybe Twitch is just picking it up more, but it's just my copyright-free lo-fi beats, yeah. <laughs> Do I know Bob? Do I know Bob? Bob's here, Bob's there, Bob's everywhere. I have a... I have a Bob quote command. I know Bob. And Raiders, uh, I'm going to be doing an activity with Bob Ross at 2.30 with my friend Life in the chat there. We're going to be following along with a Bob Ross tutorial using only audio. So it's going to be a total, total fun mess, chaos. It's going to be great. Okay, so tutorial, great. Anyone who's uh, following along here, we can move on to our next step. Our next step is going to be just sketching out the flowers. So you know me, I like to usually sketch things out before I paint them so I don't go right in with my teal, right in with my mint. I'm going to use some white paint to kind of shape these out. I have lots of tips for you to shape these out. Uh, and uh, yeah, we'll kind of put on just a sketch and then we can put the colors in after. That's the fun part, just filling them in with whatever colors you like. So I'm gonna use the nice medium round brush now. I like this one for sketching personally, but use your favorite. You can dip in the water. You can dab on your towel or paper towel. And I'm just going to use white paint here. Oh, you do art too. I'm only a hypnotist on Twitch. Can't read other hypnotists. Art is so perfect because art is relaxing. Ah, amazing. Great connections. Cool. Oh, yeah. Life's right on the bob quotes. Oh, excellent. Okay, I've got my white paint, everybody. If you like the layout of my flowers, which you're welcome to change as well, uh, what I did is I put a nice round center, kind of like you can see, uh, just further in the middle from the bottom left corner. And then up here, I stuck a little closer to the top right. So they're a little bit offset. I kind of liked that personally. If you like things being a little more even, then you can kind of plan them to be kind of the same distance from each corner. But again, I'm gonna offset a little bit, bring it further in keeping it tighter up top. So I start with the two circles, or you can start with one if you want and then do the other. Maybe that's a little bit smarter. I forget if I did one at a time. I think I did one at a time actually, so let's do that. Just a nice circle to start. Again, you can see mine is kind of floating, maybe a little higher up than that bottom left corner. Move it around if you need. I'm gonna move it maybe a little closer. Second guessing myself as usual, but that's why we use white. You can do that as much or as little as you need. What paint brand do you like, Amy? I use Star Academic Acrylic. It's kind of painty there, you can see. Star Academic Ac. <laughs> it's Star Academic Acrylic. It's from Curry's Art Store, but I'm sure it's sold elsewhere as well. Okay. And yeah, lots of tips for petals, so let me show you. So I use, uh, I did pointed petals. You can do rounded ones if you like, or fuller petals if you want. I also space them out a little bit if you want more of a full flower. You can add more if you need, uh, but I'll walk you through what I did here. So my first little technique is for length of petals. I find the biggest key to making a nice even looking flower is the same length in all the petals. So they want them to be all the same length. And the way I do that is I use my brush as a measuring device, so no measuring tape needed. Don't need to go into your tool closet, we can just use our brushes. And I just choose how long I want my petal to be. You can see it's uh, pretty long here, it goes, you know, about three quarters of the way up from the middle. And I use my brush like this, I kind of keep my fingers um, at a point on the brush where it's going to be at the edge of the circle, and that the top is meeting the top of my petal. See that? So it's the same length. And then that way what I do is I go in a clockwise fashion and I can keep everything pretty much the same. Yeah, that's the same there. I was just double checking my width there. There we go, or length rather. Okay, so I'll demonstrate on here what I'm doing. So again, I'm keeping my fingers just at any point on my brush, probably closer to the bottom. I'm gonna go to the edge of my circle. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna like tap like this. I'm gonna tap the bristles so that a little bit of white paint comes off. I grab my white, just to clarify, and I now have a little bit of a white dot up here. It might be hard for you to see, but I've got it here. And so that's telling me where my petal's gonna end, right? And then all I need to do is kind of rotate around the center a bit, keeping my fingers in the same spot. Again, I'm following the outside of my circle, and I'll tap again. That's gonna be my second petal. I'll go around, tap again. 
You get it, it's like a little clock. It's like you're just doing some little nicks on a clock all the way around. So you can see my petals go almost to the right hand side. I think this is about the same length as my other ones there. And a little more white paint so I can show myself where I'm hitting here. Whoops. And again, it's kind of up to you with the distance apart you're doing. I would just try and keep it consistent. You can keep them a little closer together, further apart. I would say I'm more on the further apart realm. So go ahead and do that. I'll give you some time. You don't need to go all the way around, of course, because some of these petals fall off. So you're just going along the top and the right hand side. All right. Sorry, Twitch, I'm behind on your comments here. Mm -hmm. Out of it. You don't hear about it much any longer. Yeah, that's true. I don't hear about a lot of hypnotists around teaching of the craft. Okay. I don't really hear it on Facebook. It's more funky on Twitch. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. It's it's all the same audio equipment and stuff, so very bizarre, Heather. Hmm. I mean, Bob Ross, yes. Oh, we know him well here. We know him well here. Agreed. I'm trying to expose more people to it because it's cool. Yeah, no kidding. I'll be checking you out for sure. There you go, Heather, you learned the Bob Crow quote. There you go. You can do anything you want to do. This is your world. <laughs> yeah, I just set that up yesterday, or last night rather, in celebration of our uh, Bob Ross stream later. Talent is a pursuit interest. Anything that you're willing to practice, you can do. <laughs> I'm learning. I'm not quite there. I'm not quite SMRT yet, but I'm, uh, I'm learning. I'm learning these commands. All right, so next step, once we have all the like hard work done of like planning out where the tops of our petals are going to be, now we just need to connect them to our centers. So I'm still using the same brush. That's the nice medium round brush. And again, I chose pointed petals, so I'm going to keep these at a tip. And what I did is just created two curved lines that come down and out a little bit, and then they come back in a little bit. Cheap trick. Thanks so much for the follow. Okay, down and out, and then down and in a little. So let me show you, I've got white paint coming out to the left a little, so doing a nice curve, and then coming back in a little bit before I hit the center. Same on the other side, just opposite, down and right, and then coming back in a little bit. So again, this is totally up to you, how wide you wanna make these, how thin you wanna make them, and again, how close together they become. You'll kind of see as you add more and more um, that they can be nice and tight or nice and spread apart. They all look good. Again, as long as you're being relatively consistent, you can choose whatever style you like, okay? Um, the one key to this though, is you wanna make sure each petal is very straight compared to the center. So even if you wanna create a little dot in the very center of your circle, that way you can kind of line things up and make sure the petal is coming straight out like this. See how it's nice and straight. I'm gonna make sure the next one nice and straight like this once I put my curves on. So, you've seen me do this before, I'm gonna do it again. I like to twist my canvas as I go so I'm not like bending my head and being like, is this straight or not? I just make everything straight. I just <laughs> show myself where it's straight. I have it nice up and down now. I'm making sure that I'm making this petal nice, uh, nice and vertical. There's one, there's two. And then when I go back, you can see it's nicely tilted, coming right from the center. Magic, magic. I'm gonna keep twisting. You can see I choose to keep my petals um, kind of close at the bottom. See how they're kind of meeting up near the bottom, but then at the top, they're splitting apart. That's what I like, but again, you do what you like. Really tra channeling Bob today, this is your world, etc. I think that's uh, a great little quote. This is your world. This painting is your world. And again, adjust as you need. You saw that I maybe made this a little wider just to close the gap a little quicker. This is why we're doing it in white first. You can make these easy changes as you go. And again, because we did that work of uh, planning out where the tips of the petals are, you can see how they're all the same length now, all the way around. They're creating a nice round circle if you were to go around all those edges. You got some wind there, Angie? Ooh, Yeah, it's totally gone now. I guess I'm uh, lucky, unlucky, however you want to think of it. Again, I like my thunderstorms, but glad it wasn't uh, causing damage. So, so here's a good example. This one's a little tilty. So if I were to go straight from the middle, 
and try and meet up with my tip here, you can see my brush is kind of off center. It's kind of like off center in the petal there, right? So I need to do something here. I have the right hand side, it looks good. I think the left hand side cuts across too quick. I need to make it a little wider. And as a result, it might overlap your next petal, but that's okay. You can have a little bit of overlap here and there, a little extra. I think it's more important that these things are straight. See, it still doesn't look very straight. I need to keep altering it. Maybe I can bring this side in closer. It's all up to you to do that. You can just alter as you need. I think maybe I'll redo my next dot. I think it's a little close, close for my liking here. I think I need to go more like here. And that's another, again, that's why I tilt my canvas. It really helps me kind of keep things straight. It helps me easily see if things are straight, going straight to the middle, or if they're kind of tilting as they go. See, it's getting nice and round there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, I'll catch up on chat in a second, guys. Just gonna finish my flower. I've got one more little tip for you because we're reaching the edges now, and you're kind of like, what's going on on the edges? We don't have tips anymore. So essentially, you're just kind of doing a guessing game when you get to the edges. You're just kind of completing half a petal. So you're doing a nice curve from the middle coming out, curve from the middle coming out. So you're not worried about length, thankfully. You don't have to worry about a perfect length. You're just kind of creating your curves coming out like that. So then you have uh, an idea of where your petals are. I'm just continuing around that circle. It's coming together. Again, if it helps you, draw some lines. Draw some straight lines coming from the middle. That way you know where the middle of your petal is going, right? Um, and gee, all of my colors are darker. Is that okay? Definitely. Yeah, 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 of course. It's all up to you. It's, it's really what you like, okay? Again, Bob, this is your painting. Yeah, seriously, do whatever you like. That's most important that you have something that you want to display or you're proud of that you want to hang up so don't worry so much about getting exactly like mine unless you want it like mine I can help you get there but otherwise it's all you it's all you okay and again you can adjust petals if maybe you have an awkward last little gap make some petals a little smaller to make room or just close them up make them a little bigger Barb, thunder is starting now, so I might lose power. I'll do what I can, but might lose. No worries, Barb, I understand. I went through the same fear about half an hour ago, so we're all in it together. <laughs> uh, again, it'll be on YouTube if you need to catch up, so all good. Okay, I'll give you a quick minute if you're still working on the first flower. I'll go through the second flower, but I'll let you know it's the same steps. Big catch up time, big catch up time on Twitch chat. Here we go. Texture, that's some texture. Yes, I read that, smart. Nice, everyone needs a bit of Bob in their life. Right, Cheap Trick? I totally agree. Bob is just so inspirational just for life purposes, not just art. Oh, howdy, Wood, you're back from the woods. What do you know? Welcome back. Wood, 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 shout out, shout out. Hello, hello. Yes, how was your trip, exactly? I thought you were uh, staying behind on Sunday. Let's go back to the best cold shower ever. Oh, I know what you mean. They are the best, they are the best. Oh nice that you have all the funds, yeah. Oh sick, you went rafting. Amazing. James is here too. How are you guys doing these bun things? You'll have to teach me. Hello. Shout out, good. Everyone's saying hi, excellent. I don't know how you, teach me later, teach me later. Stephanie, hi from Houston, Texas. Will there be a replay posted? Yes, it'll be here for the time being on Facebook, so I'd recommend liking the page and that way you can easily find me, uh, just in the videos tab. And then eventually it will move to my YouTube page, but before it's there, it'll be here, you know? So it's always somewhere. You'll never uh, lose the video. I'm the same on YouTube, Aaron Bun Paints, so you can just search that up. There's also a link on my Facebook page. You can easily go there, and uh, that way you'll be, if you subscribe, you'll be notified when uh, I post. There you go, Stephanie. Welcome as well. If you want to hang out in the meantime, feel free. A lot of people like to just hang out and watch and ask questions in the meantime, and then they're ready to go when they're ready to paint. Cool. All right, I'm just grabbing more white, everybody. I'm just gonna do my second flower. It's the exact same steps. The only difference is it's a little tighter to the corner. You can see I put the circle right nestled in here. It was just to create a little more room. 
Um, if you like the exact layout I have here, this was actually by accident that I had this kind of puzzle piecing like this. I actually really like when the petals overlap, um, but it just so happened when I was going around that they puzzle pieced right in between each other. If you like that look, you could easily just make sure you're putting dots around one of these petals here, kind of dot, dot, and then going from there. Or you can just go with the flow and see what happens. So it's the same strategies. I'm still going to do my little clock method and then uh, sketch out all my petals. So you can do that whenever you're ready. If you're still working on the first flower, I would keep going. I'm sure the second flower will be a little quicker for you because you're kind of in the know of what to do. So again, the only difference is my circle is getting a little tighter to the corner to make more room. If you want to, I know I'm going to do this. I'm flipping this over so that my circle's closer to me. I don't have to reach all the way over here. Do as you need. And redo that circle. It was more of an egg shape. And then again, I'm going to just plan out where some petals are going by using the length of my brush. Maybe you can make them a little smaller if you need a little more room, or make them nice and big and overlap. I think I'll try overlapping a little bit just to uh, try and get my initial thought going here. So I'm going to purposely do some little tips that overlap like this. Again, oops, both methods will work. Both methods will work. Again, or you can just see what happens. <laughs> you can just place on those dots, put those little petals on, see where they go. Okay, first one is here. So I'd say these petals are a little shorter, but they're still going to overlap. And tilt. Da, 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 da. Tilt as I go. Going a little quick here. No reason, I'm just going to be quick and then I can chat with everybody too. Okay, so that one's a little tilty. So see what's happening. They all kind of start to tilt into one another. It happens to me too. So just regroup, just do a little straight line. See what's going on. See that? So the straight line is not going in the middle of the pedal. That means the pedal's a little tilty. I need to either bring out this left hand side more or bring in the right hand side, either one. So I want to make that line in the middle of that petal. I'm going to test this one too just to see. Oh, that one's good. Okay. Maybe a little here. And then again, just on the edges, you're just kind of doing the bases of the petals. You'll do even less of this for this one because you can see the middle's right by the edge, so you can really just do a few little tick marks to show yourself where some petals are separated. I got probably one more like right here. And again, you can take a little step back, see how things are looking. Again, this petal got a little crazy here because I was doing it a couple times. So if you have some areas that you feel like you won't want to leave there, you can either fill them in now with some background color or just wait till later. Wait until we color them in and then we can go back with beiges and kind of cut up some pieces of white if you don't like those showing. But as long as you know where you need to go right now, you know, so you can kind of like put more white where you actually want to go so that you know when you're coloring in where you're going. Yeah, you're welcome, Stephanie, anytime. Nancy, hi from Shefford, Quebec, welcome, Quebec. Uh, Natalie, I'm thinking of using the paint I used on the wall for my room for the flowers. Will it stick on the canvas? I think so, Natalie. That's, I think, the first time I've had that question, quite literally using house paint, wall paint. So cool, oh my gosh. Yeah, I think it will. I don't see any reason why it wouldn't. Um, it might be a little bit of a different consistency, maybe that's the only thing, but that's such a good idea. And then you can hang it in your room and it quite literally matches. You don't need to worry about color matching. Go for it. Let us know how it works out. I can't wait to see. Oh my gosh, what's going on, Twitch? What are you doing? I like those wide buns. They're cute. Squishy buns. You're out of control. <laughs> I wonder why it does. I have no idea what's going on. Yeah. Poor spuds. <laughs> All painty. <laughs> Y'all are wild today. What's what's up with you guys on a Sunday? Okay, life. I'm excited too. See you soon. Celine, hi Erin, I'm just wondering what you do with the double of your paintings because you must have a collection, Celine, you know. 
You know I have a big collection. You've caught on. Just gonna check Manjeet's comment to see if there's a question. I think I need a ruler to make all those straight lines. Do as you need. I usually try and say like, stay away from tools just to give yourself a little more of a flexible time, not being as worried about exact like edges and stuff. But if you think it'll help you, I'm not gonna stop you. I think you should do it for sure. And then Natalie, I'll let you know how it works out perfect. Celine, as of now, all the second paintings that I have, piled up, not doing much with them. Uh, usually, Celine, I end up donating them. In the past, what I've done is I've gone to um, retirement homes and uh, I just give them the paintings. Usually I go into the retirement home with like a box of maybe uh, 40 to 60 paintings, multiple boxes of 20. <laughs> and um, usually what happens is I connect with a manager there and they set up some sort of an activity for the seniors. Um, so usually it involves like gathering all the seniors in a nice little room and then they all uh, maybe bid with play money or monopoly money for the paintings and they'll, or they'll do a little game, like a very easy game. They'll roll a die and if they roll a six they get to choose a painting just to like keep things in order a bit. It's always really wholesome and lovely, um, but with COVID I haven't really been doing that. I visited a retirement home probably two months ago just to straight up just drop the paintings off and go. They actually were like, please drop them right outside the front door. They gave me a little wave and then I got back in my car. They took the box with all of their, you know, gloves and mask on, like brought it in. <laughs> and I assume they let it sit for a little bit and then probably distributed. So I'm still doing that here and there, but I'm kind of just waiting to see if maybe um, I can get back in there to do a fun activity with them too. Because that's, that's way more fun. I, I don't... It's kind of sad for me to just drop the paintings and be like, bye-bye, hope they get handed out. And I, I'm sure they are, like I trust uh, the managers I work with, but it's always really fun to see uh, what the seniors choose. It always like spurs some stories from them too. They go, oh, elephants, I used to do to do with elephants, da, 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 and they get all excited about it. So I miss it and I'm gonna see if I can maybe go uh, when things are a little better. Still, I guess it's stage three in Ontario. I'm sure I could, but I don't know how retirement homes are doing right now still. I know they've been extra cautious, so just want to respect that. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I've done a painting on canvas using my paint from my walls. Ooh, Sharon! And it was an abstract painting, worked out so great. Ah, oh, okay, great. <laughs> I'm a little seal, like, yay! <laughs> Honestly, that's such a cool idea, and then it matches automatically. And you, maybe you can donate to schools too. Love it, love it, Anju. And I've thought about hospitals. I don't know why I find it hard to find a contact at a hospital and a hospital that wants them. I think they hang like, you know, art to sell in hospitals sometimes, and they might not just want my secondary paintings. Ooh, I don't know. <laughs> if anyone in the KW Southern Ontario area has connections, let me know, because uh, I would love to give some of these out to people. So that's so sweet. They all have tons to pick from where you go when you go back in. You know it. Literally, I think, oh, well over a hundred now. Well over. Because um, I have paintings from my previous position too that are all um, stocked up as well. So I got lots to hand out, lots to give. We are still in stage two. Okay. I think certain cities in Ontario, but I think I'm outside of the stage two realm. I think it was all like very close GTA, so I'm like further away. Pretty sure we're stage three here. Anyway. Okay, well, one more minute, guys, and then we'll uh, go on to filling in our flowers. I think this is the fun part. Oops, sorry, guys. There we go. still here lurking. No worries, Cheap Trick, of course. More people have come. They're all very welcoming. They can't afford your paintings, Erin. There will be such a crowd wanting them. They, weren't. they won't work during the pandemic. Oh, please. Please. And I was, um, I was talking to Twitch about this the other day. I had an idea that maybe I just sell them from, like, you know, a website or something and then donate the money. You know, I, uh, I, I feel like I am I don't really want to sell these for a profit. I don't know why. I just feel like they're not my best work in a way. I don't know. I'm kind of in a weird stage where I'm like I want to do some personal art that I'm, you know, feeling like I spent a lot of time on and these ones are more just, you know, live painting. I don't feel right selling them to people in a way, but I'd be more than willing to collect money and then give it back. So, <laughs> um, I might try and do that. I know setting up a website is a lot of work, but I want to do that anyway. And then maybe I can have a little bit of an auction here and there, I think would be a fun idea. Like start the prices at 10 bucks or something and, uh, collect the money. And after shipping costs, I can donate the rest. So look out for that. I'll let you guys know if I'm able to set that up. It's a lot of, uh, organizing, but something I'm willing to do. So 
It's getting darker. I think the storm is going to come. Ooh, Ariana, hang on. I think I've painted over 50 paintings since COVID started, Sharon. You probably have. My walls are getting full. Yeah, so you might be in a situation like me soon where you need to uh, give some away. Someone posted a video. I think it was Marilyn. Could have been someone else. No, Marilyn messaged me saying she's over 100. 100 since COVID started through myself and other tutorials she's found. And I know someone else posted a video. They they spliced all of their paintings together and you can see every single one of like about 80 of them. So, wow, you guys. It's so exciting to hear, honestly, that you're tuning in that much and that you're getting so much, uh, so much joy out of this. So, man, keep those numbers up. <laughs> Mine too. See, Rachel's in the same boat. Oh my gosh. It's so cool. All right, are you guys ready for color? I think so. I think I gave a lot of time for the sketching. If you're still working on sketching, again, I would do that first just so you're confident with your placement of everything. But uh, let's get into some, some uh, color. Yeah. I'm going to start with my teal flower. So I call this one the teal one. I call this one the mint one. So teal first. Um, and uh, again, Subly from Twitch, she was saying she really likes kind of the um, impressionistic look, and I totally agree. Uh, so that's kind of all these nice little small brush strokes. Impressionism is when you're putting all these small brush strokes together to make kind of one solid object or one overall look. You can still see the shape of things, but lots of different shades of color, lots of small brush strokes. So I took that into account and I tried to uh, apply it here. Uh, so what I did for these petals is I kind of created a base color of teal. So you can kind of see there's majority is kind of this medium teal, right? And then as it was still wet, I went in with some white. You can see some white, just streaked that on a little bit. So it kind of mixes with the teal. Some of it stays behind as white. Uh, I mixed a darker teal. I like to, to center that more at the base here, more at the tip. And then I even made more of a blue teal, kind of see some different bluey, bluey teal streaks just to add yet another shade of this teal in there and just stroke that wherever. So that's kind of the idea. I'm gonna be applying that process to each petal. Uh, I did one petal at a time because I found it easier to do this when the background was wet. So you might want to mix a few different piles of these colors rather than using the same pile over and over um, so that you can easily pull from each of the colors as you go around. Okay, so I'll walk you through one petal. I'll keep walking you through as I go, but just know it's going to be the same process each and every time all the way around. Okay. My walls are full of paintings and shots the same. Allison Chatham lost power. Oh no, and I have lost you, Erin. Allison, no worries. If you have data, you can keep watching, but you, you could probably, if you heard what I said there, you could probably get the rest of this done. Just choosing your colors, stroking it on, and then we have the center, which I guess is the last step. But don't worry, the, the video will be saved. My power is still good, so video will be available when you're back. Oh, I'm so sorry though. <laughs> Do the little bat. Oh, you're in the dark. <laughs> Stay safe anyway, Allison, that's more important. But again, you might just have fun filling them in on your own. So if you're still here, you can, uh, if you can still hear me. Can you hear me? You can start to do that whenever you want. So on my plate, I'm pouring some blue, I'm pouring some yellow, and I'm going to pour a little more white. I figured that would happen somewhere at least. Pretty windy. So I'll mix the main teal color with you and then I'll show you what I do for the other colors. Um, the main teal color, I'm grabbing some white. I am using my medium round brush, by the way. I'm gonna mix some blue in there. So I'm making what I would call like a nice medium blue. It's not too dark, not too light. Something like that. So that was my original phthalo blue. This is more of the medium blue here. And then just a wee bit of yellow. If you add too much yellow, it's going to turn this green. And I'm kind of looking for more of the teal color personally. Again, maybe you want green, do as you like. And maybe you're doing a completely different color than me. You can just mix a base color of whatever you want, okay? So whatever you want kind of the main color to be, I would just mix that for now. But I'm going teal, so see how the yellow just made it a little more of that kind of aqua, turquoisey teal color. If you make it too green, put some blue in there, maybe put a little more white in there. Just keep playing around till you get the color you like. And I'll start on any petal, doesn't matter which one. And I like to just fill it in with this, so that way I'm making sure I have the whole shape the way I want. 
got a nice base layer of color, no gaps. Um, and just sticking with the overall look of this painting, I was being a little more just kind of like rough with it. You can see how on the edges here, they're not clean edges. I have these like little strokes, kind of like sketchy looking strokes, again with the impressionistic look. So don't worry about going around like this and getting a nice perfect edge. I just kind of like use my tip and just do some small little brush strokes as I curve around or as I come to the tip. Look at that, just kind of stroke, stroke, stroke. The tip could be a little feathered like that, that's fine. I think it just adds the overall look. I really like the, uh, the rough look there. Just as you need, I'm just gonna look at this straight on. I think the base needs to go out a little more. There we go. Oh, it's cut off a little there. Right, so again, it doesn't have to be perfect. That's why this painting's so great. There's a lot of that. There's a lot of like rough stuff and just sketchy looks, impressionistic looks, they're all good, okay? So once you have that, once you just have like one base on, bring this a little closer. Bring it close to the middle, guys, by the way, because uh, it's better to overlap the middle rather than getting too far out. So overlap a little if you need to. It's a little easier that way. Once you get there, you can wash off your brush a little bit. And uh, let's make a nice uh, kind of darker teal. So again, I would recommend doing a new pile so that you have this one existing for your next petal. Same idea, you're just using less white this time. So you're making a darker teal. It's going to be lots of blue, tiny bit of white, a little bit of yellow. So you can see it's still a teal, it's just a nice dark version of the teal. So it still has that kind of green tone, little tinge, turquoisey tinge, again, so many names for this color. Here's making a darker version of what you had. All right, and I'm gonna start the uh, small brush strokes, the impressionistic look. So this is just going to be adding small little strokes. So I'm using the tip of my brush, just doing individual strokes. They all might kind of combine a little bit together. You can overlap them a bit, but because you're making them all individual, they're all gonna show up a little individual. So again, even if you overlap a little, you'll still see the ridges and the individual strokes around like that. Okay. So I like to stick closer to the base for the darker teal, maybe a little further up. You can kind of space them out further or make them smaller as they come up. And I also like to do the tip up here, just a little darker. So just piling it right on top, allowing it to kind of blend or mix as it goes. Just kind of gives it a little bit of shape, a little bit of dimension there, see that? Yeah. And you're starting to get those individual strokes. Again, you're starting to get that impressionistic look. Oriana, oh, okay, the thunderstorm is here. Oh, take cover, get comfy. Get wine, as Sharon suggested. Hi, Erin, love the bow in your hair. Thank you, just had to say, going off we will do later. Okay, Shirley, no problem, thank you. I love little bandanas like this. There's a little bit of spice to my ponytail, so thanks. Subly, how'd you make that color again? Uh, which one, Subly? They're both similar, I'll just go through both if you want. Um, this one was blue with kind of about the same amount of white, I would say, and then a small amount of yellow. And then this one, was the same combination, just more blue. So you use more blue, a little less white, and then about the same amount of yellow. If you need uh, more tips than that, let me know. I can be a little more specific with each color if you need. Okay. So I'm just gonna go on to the next color just because again, we want this to be wet with all of these steps, but take your time as you go, of course. And remember, it's gonna be the same steps all the way around, so you can really take your time if you need. Next though, I'm dipping into some white. So I just washed off my brush, I'm grabbing white paint. And this I would say I stick more kind of on the outsides. So maybe blending. And again, by blending, I mean it's going on top of the wet turquoise, wet teal, and it's kind of just creating new colors there. So I go kind of around the edges. And then I like to fill up the middle a little bit here. And again, that's going to make sure you have lots of individual brush strokes pretty much everywhere. So that was pretty quick, but hopefully you saw there just grabbing little amounts of white. And I'm sure you're noticing that when you put on your first few streaks of white, they're probably pretty bright like that. 
And then as you move around, they get a little more dull. And again, that's because it's just blending into the previous color, which was that teal. So it's great, because then that way you get lots of different shades going. It's coming together, see that? Even with the white, I would say the white is the big difference maker here. So here's a little comparison. And again, if you like having some, some of this kind of stuff where you just have one individual stroke, one individual stroke, just grab some clean white and do it again. Boink. Clean white. Boink. The boinks are important. Boink. And then you get some, yeah, some just pops of color, pops of white. Oh, wet white subly? Um, well, my brush is always a little wet, I guess, to clarify. What I do is I'm constantly washing it off and then tapping it off a little, so it's a little wet. Um, but I'm still just dipping into the white as usual. I'm not like adding water to the white or anything. I'm just using kind of a wet brush. And I've got one more color to add right after. Not gonna lie guys, my computer has been frozen for 30 seconds. There we go, yeah, I was gonna say, now do I panic? <laughs> when do I panic? Okay. All right, and then the last shade I have, it's a very minimal shade. I just kind of add a couple little strokes of it. I just do a little bit of blue. So rather than mixing, I just dip my brush into the plain phthalo blue. And if I use just a little on my brush, what'll happen is it'll kind of blend a little as I go. So again, it won't be straight blue. It'll be more of like a bluish teal. It just adds yet another little hue. Again, it's very minimal. I only did a couple little strokes, but you can kind of see it. Yeah, right in there show you as I add. It just helps you even fill up gaps too if maybe you have any spots where you can't see some individual brush strokes. Just brush on a little blue. Just helps everything kind of combine a little bit more. Cheap trick, do you ever beat the devil out of your brushes? No! <laughs> I wish though. I don't have a wide open studio like Bob does. I'm worried that if I were to beat the devil out of the brush it would all splatter on my wall. But I kind of want to um, make a little sound like I am. Yeah, I think that would be fun. Rip devil, exactly. <laughs> devil count, 32,000. <laughs> Sharon's good. Okay. All right, so those were all the steps for one pedal. You're literally doing the same thing with each and every pedal. So I'll maybe repeat the second pedal here just in case anyone needs a review. But if you know what to do for the first pedal, you just go all the way around. Um, as you go around, you might also get a little quicker at these steps, so you could maybe do two petals at a time rather than one, 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 because you're constantly washing off your brush and re-dipping, etc. So if you're confident you can do kind of two while things are still a little wet, then do it. Maybe I'll try it right now, just to show you what I mean. So I'm starting again with my base teal color, so just your regular teal. Whatever you think your regular teal is or whatever you want your base color, your main color to be. And I'm filling in my next two petals. You can go at whatever pace you want. If you're, if you're super fast, do all of them. I don't know. <laughs> I'd be shocked if you're able to do all of them at once, but perhaps. Again, I kind of do the sketchy edging, so I'm just kind of brushing lightly along the sides here. I am gonna do a second one at the same time just to test my speed here. So using that same base teal, just filling in the second petal now. It's getting sunny here, guys. Getting a little brighter. I don't feel like it's nighttime anymore, anyway. It was so dark for a while there. Again, softly going around the edges. That gives the nice sketched out look. Next thing I do is I dip into my darker teal. Again, these are the same steps. I'm just repeating in case anyone needs to know. Dark teal, medium round brush, doing some small strokes now, just at the base and at the tip. Doing the same thing on the other petal.
add in some white next. I, of course, washed off my brush. When you're going from a darker to lighter color, just be washing off your brush. You don't really need to wash it in between the first teal and the second teal. It's more so when you get to white, I would recommend that. And you can see I'm trying to get small individual strokes, so really make sure you're kind of picking up your brush as you go, allowing all of those little strokes to be a little bit more separated. Grab extra white if you want more of a clean white look, just doing one or two strokes at a time. So you get some nice highlights in there. You can even stroke them a little into the dark teal if you want, but you can see I like to kind of keep them a little more in the middle, just for blending reasons, you know, so you're not halting right when you get to the dark teal. You can just tap a couple in there if you want. Right? And then the last step, I just grabbed a little blue. I can just use the same brush for that. And allowing the phthalo blue to blend a little, so trying to press into the teal as I go. That way it turns into more of a blue teal. Just gives, again, another little punch of color in there. That was two at a time. So, go at your own pace, as I keep saying. You can do one, two, three, four, five at a time, whatever you think. Mm -hmm. LOL, understand, yeah. Bob's got that big studio, he's able to really just whip anything out of that brush that he wants. He doesn't have to worry about where it's going. Me, I have a carpeted floor, I have lots of uh, tarp, if you can hear that on my feet there. Uh, but I'm still close to walls, so <laughs> gotta be careful. Oh, Terry's here, thunderstorm in Toronto. Oh, so it's reached Toronto. Oriana, are you okay? Oh, no. Oh my god, it's raining so hard. It's so windy. I can't see anything and just saw lightning. Help, I'm gonna hide under my blanket. Wrap up, get cozy. And maybe it's like here, uh, Oriana, it lasted maybe 10 minutes. Maybe. Put on some music or something, get a little comfy, it'll be okay. It passed right through here. You'll be good. Thanks, Terry, for letting us know. Grope, yeah, you can see the difference in lighting now. Oh, yeah. I felt like the whole background was just pitch black, and I was like, what am I missing? And all my lights were on, and it was just the uh, the window that I have over on the side there. It was crazy. So same thing, guys. If you want to rotate as you go, go for it. Yummy Rocks, cheap trick. I'm glad you were still here, didn't I tell you? Oh, thanks, Yummy Rocks. You've been so nice about sharing my streams recently. And again, like, extra cool you brought, uh her here. I want to go check out her streams as well. That's so intriguing to me. A hypnotist stream. Wow. So do so people participate? You said it was a little more of teaching, I think, right? Teaching the craft, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. Either way, so cool. What a unique idea. Hey, Heather. You were watching somebody on Twitch and you recommended. Who was that? I wrote it down somewhere and then I lost my paper. I wanted to check it out. You said they were really funny. It was like a Canadian vlogger, I think. If you wouldn't mind, I don't know if you're still here. Let me know who that was. Because I was I was really interested and I felt bad. I was like, I lost where it was. Or I shut down my computer or something. I forget what happened, but wherever I wrote it down, it disappeared. I find I'm especially connected to the, the Canadian crew, so. <laughs> I like checking out what they're doing. Uncle Spuds gives everyone some sort of Mediterranean salad I've made with <laughs> Yum! Yum, yum, yum. I'm looking forward to my Cobb salad for lunch after this tutorial. I'll eat that before the Bob Ross activity. Again, I'm doing the same thing, guys. If anyone needs a reminder of the order here, let me know. And you can play with the order, too. I mean, if you need to go back and re-add color, you always can. It's not like this is a hard rule of doing this exact order of color, so just remember that, too. And if you don't get the exact same colors each time, like maybe you need to remix your base teal, you can see it doesn't really make a difference. I feel like my teal has gotten a little more green, but once I add all of the other colors on top, it's no big difference, right? You can always alter if you need, but I find it just kind of adds to the look that you have all these different tones of this one main color, and you'll kind of be able to see that, hey, the main color is teal, and that's all that matters. I'm just gonna try and line this up a bit more. This tip needs to come out. There we go. Rough. 
Mm. Yes, Yummy Rocks. It's generic sessions everyone can benefit from. Okay, I also do private sessions virtually, and those are longer too. The ones I stream on Twitch are about 15 minutes. Oh, okay. So short little ones. Oh, cool. Wow, so intrigued. Erin, not only that, but she also does coloring streams. Oh, okay, so pr that's probably how you found her. I, that's why I was guessing. I was like, do you sketch? <laughs> Yummy Rocks loves sketching. Coloring streams are so soothing. You are so sweet, young. Thanks, you are too. I'm glad I found your channel. As far as I'm concerned, you and our family. Oh, that's so nice. Say it again. Twitch community has been outrageously nice and welcoming. Facebook too. I'm just, uh, with each platform, I'm always kind of like, what am I walking into? And it's always a nice, pleasant surprise everywhere. So it's great. My dark teal. Again, my dark teal is maybe a tiny bit different, but same idea. You can see it's still darkening up the tip here, darkening up the base. I'm gonna try and go a little quicker here, just watching the time. Because this is the same step over and over. If you need more time to do this, just of course please take your time. After this step, after all this flower, we just do the second flower in a different color, same exact um, technique. And then it's really just the middles of the flower. So at this point, if you need to slow it down a little or you just want to relax a bit, if the thunderstorm's causing issues, just go with the flow, don't worry. Carbon my white here, individual strokes. speed up as you go if you get more comfortable with it. It's all the same. It's all kind of a messy technique, right? So you really could go a little quicker if you wanted, but go at your own pace. I'll keep saying it. I'll keep saying it. What time is it now? Here? It's uh, about 1.30. By the way, McSnoopies, I'm glad you're alive. Um, <laughs> heard you had a wild night? <laughs> wild stream? Feeling okay? I was streaming all day yesterday, so I missed out apparently. Or maybe didn't miss out? I don't know. <laughs> Oriana, hope you're doing okay. I keep looking back at the Facebook comments and I see a little hiding under the blanket comment. I'm like, oh. Thinking of you guys in Toronto right now, oh boy. Yes, 1.30. Wasn't that wild. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Fun night though? Maybe you have uh, just crazy wild nights. Maybe for me that would have been wild and <laughs> for you just like, ah, it's a Saturday. <laughs> Oops, I want my dark teal first. Or maybe your friends were, I don't know. I don't know why I only did one petal here. Could have done two easily. Especially when you get to these like smaller petals, right, that are falling off. You can do probably three at a time. Easily with the paint still nice and wet to blend. Pretty dull. Oh, okay. We'll have a wild night tonight, McSnoops. Oh, see, these are. I need to tilt this so I can have all my streaks kind of. It's. I like to have all my streaks kind of going in the direction of where the petal is. See how that started? I started streaking down. I want to make sure I'm streaking into the middle there. So you can easily just grab a little more white or teal, whatever you need. Stroke on top. Bring them all back the other way. There we go. It's a little better. 
That way we see the direction the pedal's going. All right, I'm gonna go back to doing a two pedal, maybe three. Let's do two and two. So I'll do another couple minutes on this. I'll try my best to whip this out. I'm always having a feeling you guys are ahead. You're starting to paint very quick compared to me now. I thought I was the ultimate speed painter and here and there I'm consistently seeing people saying, oh, I'm done, I'm ready. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I'm halfway done, great. Again, my blues are turning a little different, but they're all pretty much the same, especially when they all get blended together with all their different brush strokes in there, it's fine. And then I'll repeat again, don't worry about the middle too much. If anything, you want to overcompensate and make sure you really bring the petals into the middle here, so that when we put the middle on top, we can make a nice clean center. We can make sure there's no gaps being left behind. So if anything, make them a little bit longer, a little bit deeper into the middle than you think they need to be. My baby sister has the same bow tie as you. Oh, but hers is a different design. Oh, says Ash Pretty. Cool. Yeah, I love these. They're just, it's just a bandana that I just tie together. Just makes me look a little more put together. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I have the ponytail too much. I'm just like, I want to spice it up a bit. I have lots of little bows and stuff like this stuff though too. Like headbands and stuff. Sometimes they hurt my ears though, and that's why I like bandanas as well. It's literally just cloth, so there's no hard wire or anything hugging my uh, my head here. They're great, they're great little, uh, little hair decorations, you know? There's my white. Is that a cheap trick? I need to get some lunch. Thank you so much. You're very welcome for your stream. You're so talented. Oh, thank you. Definitely be back sometime soon. And cheap trick, I will be checking you out. That was, uh, I had no idea anything like that existed on Twitch. Every day I'm just uh, shocked and amazed at what people do. So I will be checking you out for sure. Thanks for uh, popping in again. Thanks for choosing to uh, check me out. Taking Yummy Rocks' suggestion. Giving, whoops, giving me a chance here. Bring your fam over. Enjoy your day, night, everybody. You too, Cheap Trick. I'm curious where your name comes from too. You maybe already left, but I'll ask you on your stream where your name comes from. Is it, a, is it the band reference, Cheap Trick, or something else? I'll talk to you about that later if you've already gone. <laughs> Big Snoopies, my friends, made me download Pokemon Go again. I like your friends. <laughs> Pokemon Go is great. Anyone still play that? Remember when Pokemon Go was popular like four years ago, five years ago? I still love it. I don't play it as much anymore, but anytime I turn it on, I'm, I remember how much I love it. I've been a little more indoors this summer, so I haven't really been using it as much, but when I am outdoors, I'm turning it on usually. Last summer I did, yeah, I, I played that a lot. It's great to use while you're walking and stuff. It kind of motivates you to keep going. Okay, on my last two petals, trying to whip these out to keep with time here. It's taking a little longer than I thought. There's a lot of streaking, a lot of color mixing, so that's why. Ooh, I have the exact same bandana, but red. Yeah, I feel like everyone kind of has a bandana or two running around. And honestly, before I was able to get a mask for COVID, I was uh, using a bandana like this and kind of like wrapping it around my mouth. Worked okay, it was better than nothing, I thought. Or like winter scarves, because this all started kind of in March, so it was a little, still very cold here in Canada anyway, so. Have my scarf wrapped around, or bandana. Where do you live, Erin? KW, Kitchener Waterloo area. But I have uh, kind of friends and roots, I would say, like all over the place in Southern Ontario, so very aware of all the little townships and places that people usually shout out. Probably visited most of them in one way or another, so. Uh, Southern Ontario connection. I would, I would say more just Southern Ontario for the whole thing. Um, okay, and then blue. Oh yeah, I forgot my blue. There we go. Okay, so I will move on in about one more minute, guys, just to make sure I'm keeping with time. I'll keep saying, if you need more time, 
take your time. The next flower is, are the exact same steps. It is the exact same steps, just a different color. Okay, and I can always uh, repeat the color for you, the mint, mint idea, so, okay. And once you have everything colored and you can really see how it's all looking, of course, uh, one thing I'm noticing right off the bat are the gaps in between my petals. So again, I kind of like flowers to be a little more even, and the way I kind of see that in terms of even spacing is looking where my gaps begin. So between these two petals, it starts about halfway up, halfway up, halfway, maybe a little less than halfway, and slowly it's getting closer to the center. So if I want things a little more even, all I need to do is just close up those gaps a little bit more. So I'm just taking my regular teal, brushing that along, and you'll see slowly it helps everything kind of become a little more even again. It looks a little more nicely spaced. Let's go a little more down here. Oops, that got a little big there. We can bring this guy, oh, is it this one? This one. You might, you might totally close up gaps and that's okay too. Grab more white, splice that in. You know, I'm trying to even it out that way. I think this one needs some help here. But yeah, take your time with that. Just kind of look at each one, each gap. See, now it looks a little more, I think, full. Maybe this one needs a little help. Take your time looking around, just adjusting a little bit at a time, and you can't really go wrong as long as you go just a small amount at a time. Lean back, look at what's happening. Yeah, I think that looks a little more even now. Cool. Sharon's ready. I'm ready too, Sharon. Let's go. All right, so the next flower, it's probably going to be a little quicker because it is much smaller and you probably kind of are used to the process now. Um, again, the only difference is I would call this more of a mint flower. Again, you might think of this as just a nice light green, for example, but I think it's more of the mint tone. Um, so pretty much it's actually a very similar color mixing to the teal. We're just using different amounts of each color. So I'm going to wash off my medium sized brush. You can too whenever you're ready. It's from Lord of the Rings. Oh, okay. Really? Yeah. All right. Missed that one, I guess. I was all like music oriented there. I like getting gifts. What are you referring to, Miss Snoopies? I feel like that was a random fact unless I totally missed something there that I said that maybe you're replying to. Like painting gifts? That was a topic a while ago. You want some of my secondary paintings? If you get the shipping in order, I would send them. <laughs> okay, so for my mint color, again, change it as you like. Oh, for Pokemon Go, gotcha, 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 gotcha. Make whatever color you like, but for my mint, I'm using the same three colors. We have white, yellow, and blue. This time I'm using more white because you can see it's a very, very pale color compared to our more like medium bold teal. Okay. Terry, ooh, I, dem I uh, showed it at the start. I can show it again a little later if you want after we're done painting here. So lots of white, everybody. I would say a medium amount of yellow and then a small amount of blue. The key is the small amount of blue because the blue, at least mine, my phthalo blue is very pigmented. So you only need a little in there to turn it more green, but mostly you're looking at yellows and whites. And again, it's really up to you what shade you make this. Again, mint can be interpreted in many different ways. I even looked up on Google because I was kind of like, I can hardly even visualize it. Like, I feel like I have an idea, but there's so many different, you know, lighter tones or slightly darker tones. So I chose what I thought was closest to mint in my mind. It's probably about like this here. And I found a big key to it was adding a lot of white because the more yellow you add, the more it kind of turns like a lime color. It turns like a really bright light green. But for the mint, the white kind of helps dull it down a bit more. So it's still kind of the light green, but you can see, I call this more of a mint shade. I think this is more minty, but you make whatever shade you think is mint. And guess what? It's the exact same process. I'm just gonna add this main color to begin with. Maybe you have some overlap like I do. You can see it should pretty much go cleanly on. Make sure you use a little more paint. 
and it will overlap. Look at that. Especially when we add more shades of color, it'll kind of cover up even more. But I, I personally love the overlap look again. That happened to be a puzzle piece here. Now you have both. You can kind of choose which one you like better and uh, just as you please. I'm going to do two petals here just to demonstrate again, just to go a little quicker as usual. It's going to be the same idea, just with different colors, different versions of these colors here. But same like order. I do a darker shade and then the white and then, did I even do a third shade? I probably, oh, maybe didn't even do a third shade here. I'll think about that for a second. Sketching out the sides again. So that's the starting mint. I'm going to make a little bit of a darker mint now. So to darken up your mint, you're just going to probably use a little extra yellow and maybe a tad extra blue. Again, be careful with the blue if you're using a similar blue to me. It's super pigmented. So you could think you could think of this as more in the green realm, I would say. It's kind of, uh, again, up for interpretation what a mint is. Like when does it stop becoming mint, you know? If it gets too dark, is it still a mint? But it's still the same color combo of yellow, blue, and white. Majority yellow, white, I would say. You're still using majority of those despite having a little extra blue in there. But yeah, anything just a little bit darker. There we go. So yeah, some might think of this as more of a green color. But see how it's just popping off. It's just a little darker. It's great. Same thing, adding it to the base, adding it to the tip. that we were doing above, so I just grabbed plain white. I'm allowing it to kind of blend as I go, doing individual strokes. Leaving some of the white nice and clean as well. You know, so you get some nice little highlights in there. I did do a little bit of a switch up. I was just trying to debate what the heck I did here. And I did do a little bit of a switch up, I remember. So again, my mint's a little different here and there, but still mint, I would say. For this one, what I did is I actually grabbed an even darker green as my last green, because I liked the idea of darkening up the base even more, and then kind of splitting a few, or just kind of like sprinkling, I should say, a few of these streaks in there just to add yet another green on top. So if you want to spice up your green a little bit more, your petals a little bit more, you could do yet another pile of yellow, white, and blue. Add even more blue this time to get it even darker. So again, more on the green realm, I would say, rather than mint. And then you can use that carefully, just a little bit at a time. Let's see how this works here. There we go. So you kind of just right at the base, you get more of a transition from really dark to medium to light mint. And I did sprinkle that, just maybe one or two kind of around like that, and then more at the tip as well. And once again, all up to you. You can do even more of this. You can just keep darkening, keep adding. It'll all add to the impressionistic look, just doing small little brush strokes and adding in. And then lots down here, yes blend, go back and add more mint if you need. But that's the thing, because we have more of a mint as the base color, if you go into your darker greens and stuff, it'll all kind of combine into a mint look. That's kind of the cool key about this, is that whatever your base color is, it kind of like pulls all the other colors in and kind of says to the viewer that it's all just mint tones, even though alone that would probably be just a green. It kind of all looks minty, in my opinion, so that's kind of the strategy there. So I'm just continuing. You can see I'm flipping around. Actually, I'm going to flip this way, and then that way it's closer to me again. And then further. There we go. So 
yeah, some of your petals might be kind of covered up because of the overlap, but just do a little guess here. Try your best. You shaped them out once, I'm sure you can do it again. That's good, yeah. You can remeasure if you need, like if you really want to make sure it's all good lengthwise. Just do a little, a little tick mark if you need. Playing Pokemon Go basically every day. That's the life, that's the life. And again, I have a big white blotch here. I can either choose to cover that up or maybe even just leave it because in the end we had those transparent white streaks anyway. So even though it's kind of like framing my petal, it might just kind of look like the background anyway. We'll just kind of continue and see how it looks. And like I said, you can adjust as needed. Acrylic paint is great in that you can go on top of things, so no rush on fixing that kind of stuff up. If, if anything, it's better you let it dry and then you can uh, play with things once they're dry so you're not mixing colors into colors, you know? See, it turned a little different. It's like kind of more of a blue, blue mint now, but I'm sure once I put all the other colors on, it'll start to match a little bit better. It's storming down in Cleveland. Oh, you guys are getting in Cleveland too. Wow, it's coming all the way down. Wow, it's moving quick, I feel. Huh. All right, well, stay safe. Hopefully your power stays just like mine did. And you can adjust the color on the canvas too. You might notice I'm applying kind of a different shade here just to try and match it a little bit more to the previous one. Just brush it right on top, blend it in. That's only if you need to change the shade, just do it right on top as it's still wet and then go ahead with your process of adding darker greens, darker mints, etc. Same thing, stroking on some darker mints by adding a little more blue, a little more yellow to my previous color. Again, I'm sure you'll get used to the idea of like how much paint to be using. You don't want to totally blob it on unless you want it to stay behind very bright. It's just maybe wiping off your brush here and there if you need to. If you need to get a little bit of extra paint off, do it. Reapply as you need. We got lots of little brush strokes. That's really the look that we're going for here. Grabbing a little more white. It's good, and then I'm gonna go in with my darker kind of mint green there just to finish that off there. Sharon, pouring rain and windy in Peterborough now. Yeah, that makes more sense. I feel like that's about the right speed. That's crazy that it went all the way to Cleveland though in that time. Or maybe it's a different storm system, not sure. I'm just assuming it's the same. It looked like it was eventually reaching you guys there, so. Stay safe, Sharon. Pour another glass. Enjoy. <laughs> Alright, and see again, like they look a tiny bit different, but overall when everything's together, you'll see it looks all mint. It's a little yellowy there, but hardly noticeable in my opinion. You can always go back if you need to to fix that kind of stuff up. That stuff, I try not to let bother me. It's all gonna look good all together when it's all done. Okay, and so I'm, I'm going on to these smaller petals here, so this will probably take me little to no time. Oh, perfect, yeah, 150, great. Just doing kind of the bases. So yeah, it might let it get a little cluttered down here, especially for the second flower, because we have a lot of um, petals very squished together. Something you can do so that it doesn't look like one solid blob of mint is really focus a couple of your white streaks on the edges. I'll show you in a second what I mean when I get to my white stage here. 
So you can see these two petals just combined into one solid blob. And I'm like, no, I want to see the individual petals though. So I'm just going to go ahead and add my medium teal or medium uh, mint, medium green, whatever you want to call it, just to the bases. And when I'm on my white stage, I'm still going to do the whole like, you know, doing a couple little strokes of white, letting them blend. But I found what was very helpful was adding my bright white. So if you want to take a large pile of white and just do like one or two strokes right on the edges of your petal, see that? It kind of shows the separation right there. And you can do the same thing on the other edge here, just kind of showing where each one starts and ends a little bit. It's just a subtle thing that the viewer might kind of see so it doesn't really look like it's uh, totally one big blob. You could theoretically do the same thing with a darker teal, just any very different shade and stick it right on the edge only, you know, like here, watch this, like this. And that's kind of showing a little edge there or here. I'll just overlap the white to show you. So even if it's a subtle difference, you can kind of see now this versus that. So try that if you want to separate your petals a little bit. I'm gonna put some white back on there, I like that. Cool. Okay, I will pour another glass. <laughs> You convinced me. We're so good to each other like that, Sharon. <laughs> you do that for me too. Get yourself some wine in. Like, okay, <laughs> sure. <laughs> for that wine glass painting we did, that was fun. Ding, ding, there we go. Pinky, Pinky makes noobs. Uh, but yeah, Terry, I will, uh, I'll show you the scraping uh, after we're done this year. Again, I showed it just before I started. I was showing anyone who uh, came early. But I love showing it because I was really having a lot of fun with it yesterday. That was a, a great time. It was like five or six hours of doing that, but so soothing. Again, I recommend just paint scraping for anyone. It was such a soothing, relaxing process. And in my opinion, like hard to go wrong on it. I think the key is really choosing a good color palette. I think the order of colors mattered. Again, I plan on perhaps doing a little bit of a tutorial on this in case anyone's interested in the paint scraping look, kind of the abstract piece. Um, and yeah, I'll tell you more about what I learned, but yeah, color order and palette, I think are key. So you're not muddying up anything. That was really all though. I feel like I'm going through a phase of that too. Clearly with the uh, background I have here, it's all scraped. It's all that scrapey kind of textured look. You all know I already love my texture. It's uh, the scraping though that's uh, kind of getting me this time. You can see how little space I have here. I'm just kind of dotting on what I can, doing some of the darkness around the edge there. <laughs> Twisted my arm, <laughs> yes, Sharon says. <laughs> separate the petals again here we go just grabbing some white trying to do some larger or just brighter white blobs kind of where the separation is happening there maybe a little right there even if it's just right at the base you know you can kind of see right here right here where it's just starting to separate you don't need to go all the way up the petal for as long as you see that helps enough there and again, this will look a little messy because the center isn't perfectly round, but you can kind of see what I mean. The white, the white, the white, the white. Yeah. Again, I'm going to look around my flower. Oh, look at that. The same thing happened again. Look at my gaps. They're about halfway up and then all of a sudden poof, they get close to the middle again. So I want to make sure I'm closing the gap a little extra here. So I'm just going to go back and add a little more kind of up here and up here. Because it kind of makes it look like, if the gap's way down here, it makes it look like this petal's kind of woo, flooping over like that. You want it to be nice and, uh, yeah, straight like the other guys there. So some white. There we 
go, and then this gap here needs a little help. If we change the colors of petals, and you know, oh yes! Post those photos! I'll remind everybody about photo posting after, but yeah, I can't wait to see! Again, that was my full anticipation with this one. I know I always say, you know, get creative, change the colors, but especially this one, I thought it would be so easy to change up just to match whatever room you want in your home to hang this up in, or just your favorite colors. Whatever you're feeling today, if you're feeling dark and stormy, you can do some darker colors. Yeah. And again, the technique translates everywhere. You're doing a base color, darker color on top, white on top. On your way, on your way. Mine was paint pilling. Now bit one big mud pile. I'll use it as a background for something. Okay, okay, Terry. You could always, um, I wonder if it was maybe like getting sticky and then it was kind of piling up or pilling like you said. Pilling, piling? Piling, yeah. Pile. <laughs> I was thinking pills like, um, like when your tights do the little pilling, like the little balls, I was kind of thinking of that. Maybe the paint was kind of balling up, kind of similar piling. Um, but yeah, maybe it's just in the sticky stage where it's half dry and it's not quite uh, not quite there to go smooth on top. So maybe even just letting it dry for like an extra five ten, you could try try again. But always, yeah, you can always use it for another one. No worries. Okay, I'll wait another quick minute. We have, yeah, two minutes to two. It's just the mills that we have left to do just to clean up these flowers. Yay! Oh, I love the color combo. Again, Subly, thank you for suggesting that. Oh, it's great. We go on a little more light teal right here. Just want to cover up the blue a bit more. Get my dark teal back. There we go. I think that's better. Yeah, these ones look really green here. That's alright. I'm worried. Quick uh, comparison. Oh, oh yeah, this one's upside down. <laughs> That's the other thing. You can switch these right side up, upside down. They look great either way. Even side. Look at that. A nice uh, landscape orientation too. <laughs> Which way does it go? It's up to you. There is your comparison there. That's a little better. Pretty close. Again, petals are just a tiny bit different lining up wise, but otherwise they're all good. Sharon's good. Okay. All right, I'll talk about the middles, then we can do them together. So the middles I made both browns. This one actually looks super dark, but it is brown. I'll try and get that light on there. Maybe you can see as the transition comes out more brown. This is a darker brown, and then I chose more of like a light, honestly it's kind of like a pukey brown for some, but I'll call it a light brown or golden brown, whatever you want, just to match the lighter tones. That's why I did two different shades. Um, I did a little kind of light middle. I kind of swirled some white and then blended out and then just dotted on some white dots on top, and that's all it is. So I'll go through each of those with you. Um, so for the browns, you'll need red, yellow, and black, and then a little bit of white as well, but let's start with just red, yellow, black. So brown, if you've seen me mix before, I like to start with red and yellow, so I'm using my medium round brush, by the way. It's cleaned off. Mixing red and yellow together, trying to do even amounts. So it's creating like a really warm looking orange. And by warm, I mean very red looking orange. It's not quite the pumpkin orange. It's more of a fiery orange. So unlike my bandana, this is more of a pumpkin orange. We want more of a fiery orange. See how like red and dark that is. And then to get brown, just a tiny bit of black in there. Or maybe a little bit more black. Just go a little at a time. You only need a little bit of black, so just do a little bit at a time. What it does, it kind of burns up the orange into more of a nice brown. Ooh, Anita, um, Teresa's asking what color you guys used there. If you don't mind sharing, we'd all love to know. Okay, nice dark brown. So again, darker color for this uh, turquoise teal. And I'm just reapplying my circle. So at this point, again, as I recommended, we should have had our petals nice and tight to the middle so that when you reapply your circle, you're not leaving any gaps. You're doing a nice clean line all the way over top. Right? You can make it nice and big if you want. Make it as big as you want, as long as you're not leaving gaps in between the petals right at the centers here, right? So you can just overlap wherever you need to. That's the beauty of this again. You can just overlap. That's 
It's a little oval shape. Let me fix that. It's a little better. Good enough. Yep, I'm going to fill that in with brown. Piling it on. And yeah, if anyone else used different colors, let us know in the comments too. That'd be nice to see. Again, I anticipate the photos, but if anyone wants to share their colors if they have a moment, go ahead. Oh, just a little dip. Where was that right here? Yes. Oh yeah, I see that. Okay. Come on around, nice and round. Okay. And once you have the brown on, I like to do a little swirl in the middle so we get a little bit of a light center and then darker edge. So after I have the brown on, I'm going to just wash my brush off, wipe it off, grab a little bit of white. I'm starting in the center and I'm just swirling from the center out like this. What happens is you have a nice light center because you had some clean white on your brush right around there. Ooh, I grabbed blue by accident, sorry, one sec. There we go. And then when you swirl, it mixes a little with the brown, it turns light brown. As you swirl out more, it mixes with more brown, turns medium, and eventually it just kind of fades away. It's a nice little soothing step. Wee, all the way around. Yay. I love that look. Again, white on the brush, start in the middle, swirl out. You can even just leave it like that if you love it. I, I honestly was really liking that look, but then I put some white dots on it. So of course the last step there, I just put some white dots on it. And I know you might be thinking, oh, brown is still wet though. Um, if you're worried about that, or if you know that that has caused you issues in the past, you can let it dry. Maybe you can go up to this middle up here, which I'll teach you in a second. It's a slightly different color, but same process. But I find as long as you're using a nice clean brush, nice little tip there. I just grabbed a better brush. This one's a little splitty. It's the same brush though, the nice medium round brush. I just have one that's a little more well loved and this one's a little pointier still. You can grab a nice big blob of white on your brush. So I really scooped it on. And then as long as you just kind of tap on and off without swirling or anything, it comes off super clean. Tap. Now, if you tap a little harder, you get some bigger dots. If you tap a little lighter, you get some smaller dots. So that compared to that. And I would say I like to uh, bring some larger dots more in the middle. So trying to really press a little harder with some more paint on the brush maybe. You can see you can kind of tap up and down maybe once or twice, just not too many times or else it'll pick up the brown in the background. So again, if you'd rather be safe, you can just let it dry for a couple minutes and then do this. And then as I get further out to the um, outsides, I'm just tapping a little lighter to kind of fill up the space with some smaller dots. Look, I can do a few at a time with that one. Cute. So again, do whatever center you like. Maybe you liked the center without the dots. I thought the dots just added a little bit of a nice light area kind of to pop off in the middle. But I, yeah, again, that swirl, I'll keep saying it. I love that swirl just on its own too. So totally just suffices the middle alone. Yay, it's a little off kilter. It still looks a little ovaly, but there you go. Maybe a little more. I'm gonna tap a little more in there just to fill it really. Tight there. I tried to space out the dots so none of them are touching. If you have a couple touching, there's no problem. But I did try and fill it up, so there's lots going on in the middle there. Okay. What brand of brush is Barb? Good question. I'll link you in just a second, okay? I think I'll uh, do this last step here just so I can get the color mixed for everybody, and then it's the same uh, steps in general, though. See, it's a little lighter compared to that one there. It's kind of back to the beige area. So if anyone uh, needs to get this last color mixed, otherwise, again, take your time. I'll hang out after this tutorial is done for a little bit as well, so no rush. The only difference with um, these two browns is that this one's lighter, this one's darker. So to lighten up our brown, if you maybe have some left over on your plate, just grab a little more white, 
stick it in. Look at that. If you need to change the tone a little, maybe you want a little more yellow toned or red toned, just grab a little more of each, kind of play around. Again, it's more important you get a color you like. I'm just adding, I would say, a little extra yellow to this to make it a little more like a golden brown, you know? Again, it's almost like a puke brown, which I know sounds gross, but I thought it matched with the mint, actually, kind of more of a yellowy toned brown, so that's what I'm going for. But basically, it's adding just white to your existing brown. And brown, as a reminder, was red, yellow, and black mixed together. See that? It's more like a, yeah, kind of like a golden yellow almost, and I just think it matches nicely with the mint rather than a nice dark brown in there. Dark brown would add a nice contrast though, kind of like a uh, like Brown Eyed Susan or Sunflower. So you could totally do a nice dark brown if you wanted. Okay, oh, that's a little red in there. Let's blend that in. Man, I'm always, it's always right here. It's like not quite around, right there. Oh yeah. See, when I go straight at it, I see it. Better, great. Same process from here. So once you have that new color, you're just doing the same thing, grabbing your brush, washing it off, white paint, going from the center and swirling. You can do that multiple times, by the way. You can see I can go back, add a little more white, tap it in, do a nice little swirl. The more you do it, of course, the lighter it'll kind of get in the middle as well, but that's kind of what I like. I like the nice contrast, a nice very light center, and then it gets nice and dark on the outside. Oh, it's just so satisfying to swirl that. Honestly, I love it. And then I'll grab the white and dot it in. And then Barb, what I'll do is I'll link you to the brushes I use. Uh, these are Princeton brand though, just to talk about them a bit. Princeton brand, um, they came in a value set of five and I have found them on Amazon. I didn't technically purchase them from Amazon personally, but it's the exact same brush and the exact same uh, package that I bought. And uh, yeah, it's a package of five, but I pretty much only used the first three in the pack. so. It's actually kind of nice, you can have a couple more to experiment with, because everyone has different preferences for brushes, I'm sure. Um, if you were to use some different ones, you might find ones that you like better. For example, I'm a big fan of this medium round brush. I think a lot of people like medium uh, flat brushes as well. It's just like a medium version of the large brush that I use, versus I hardly ever use it. Even in my personal paintings, I'm like never grabbing it. so comes with a filbert brush as well and that's like more of a uh, it's flat and rounded it's kind of like best of both worlds so you get a flat brush but it's like a curved um, curved edge at the top so yeah I think it's a great little set for anybody to try out because it gives you some variety but it also gives you the exact brushes I use if you like following along with me same thing on this guys I'm doing uh, larger white dots in the middle trying to make them a little smaller on their way out Ta -da! Which way did it go? Oh, the other way again. Yep. So <laughs> I flipped it around, I flip it again. And uh, final comparison. Boom. There we go. So it looks like my flowers over here became a little more full. Remember, I was filling up the gaps a little more. Looks like here I uh, kept them a little thinner rather than wide and kept the gaps a little smaller. Or I mean, a little wider actually because it came down further. So there you go, you have two different looks, very similar paintings, but slightly different, and I'm sure that's what everyone else is experiencing too, so even though I painted both of these in a, in a week's time, it still came out different, so important to remember, you're not always going to get it the exact same as me, that's why I always say it's more important that you're making colors you like and uh, kind of doing the style you like. Question, why is that brush so long? You think it's long? I think it's like a normal size brush, let me, let me see here, this one? They're all kind of the same. I'm, this is just what I'm used to wood, I don't know. 
It's just that I mean, I've never seen, uh, well, that's not true. I have seen shorter detail brushes. I've seen them like this size, but I don't know. I think it's just because some people like to, like, you see, I use them more like this, kind of like a pen or a pencil. Why is a pen so long, right? To hold the ink, I guess. But, um, yeah, I hold it like this, kind of like a pen or pencil, but I've definitely seen people holding it like this, especially for things like this, where they want a looser look. And then that way they kind of have more of a loose stroke. They're not as, you know, detailed and uh, doing, I guess, perfect little edges, perfect little strokes. They kind of like the idea of the brush doing its own thing. You know, I think Bob says that too. Kind of let the brush do what it wants. I think uh, holding it at the end is more, more that method. There you go. It has gotten sunny. Isn't that cool, Manajeet? Just as we're ending, just as the flowers are all done, it's like the sun comes out, flowers are growing. Um, yeah, as a reminder, sign your paintings, everybody. Wee. Get a little signature when you're all done. If you're still working on them, I would wait until you're done to uh, get that signature on there. Um, it was Barb, right? Barb, I'm just heading to Amazon now to get you a link. Sorry if the video gets a tiny bit jittery. I think uh, someone mentioned when I open up a new tab, it seems to get a little jittery. I'm still here though. At least I'm not teaching anything. You're not jittering. It's not jittering as I'm teaching. Okay. Princeton value brush set. And there's tons of value brush sets. I'm just gonna link you to the one I have, but if it's any indication of, if Princeton is any indication of like my brushes here, I'd recommend any of them because these have lasted me so long. I, uh, these have been well, well used. I've had many of these and uh, many people have used them multiple times a week, washed multiple times. Yeah, like, like endless, like hundreds, hundreds of times. Probably, I wouldn't be, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to say thousands really, so. There you go. And they're still holding, I have never had an issue with any bristles falling out. Um, the shape does go after a while, but that's because I'm, you know, tapping the bristles and moving them around a lot. So that's definitely not Princeton's fault. That's more me. <laughs> Thanks so much, Erin. I painted this one to go in my bedroom, did two shades of blue. Perfect, Sharon. Again, I'm so pumped. I think this one will be one where you're uh, kind of like hanging up. It's a nice, simple piece and easy, easily customizable. So that's great. Teresa says, thank you. You're welcome. Wood, neat. I don't paint really, so I had no idea. Oh, okay, no idea. Yeah, I, that's kind of my best guess. I think it just gives some flexibility for how people like to use them. But yeah, I almost never use the very end like that. I don't know why I would. Again, I kind of want to try oil paint soon, and I kind of envision that with oils, maybe. Like even though these are acrylic paint brushes, I think oils I'd want to be a little looser with to get all the nice textures and stuff and to get like uh, just more of a, not abstract look, but kind of just the messier looks, you know? Not, not lots of piles of paint kind of moving the, uh, the colors into one another. Yeah. Thank you, girl. <laughs> Here comes the link, Barb. I'm gonna shut that down so it stops freaking out again. Barb, here it comes. Take it, Facebook. Go, go. There you go. It's a direct link to uh, the five brushes, and I use the first three. Large, flat, medium, round, small, round. And you, how do you wash your brushes? I technically have brush soap. I think it's called the Master Brush Cleaner. Um, it's sold in a huge tub. Essentially, it's just like a plastic tub, and there's a big just brick of soap in there <laughs> and you open up the lid and then you rub your bristles on top of the big thing of soap and then uh, I kind of like to rub it in my palm as well. I rub the bristles in my palm. So I rub in the soap, ch -ch -ch. I rub in my palm ch -ch -ch. and then I just put it under running water and that's it. Um, but I think dish soap works just as well. I know I've used that in a pinch where maybe I'm not here or I run out of my master brush cleaner and dish soap is very powerful so maybe just like do a quick little sprinkle of it, do the same thing, rub in your palm to kind of suds it up and then uh, wash it out with water. And then I lay them flat to dry. I think ideally, the idea is that you want to lay them actually like this to dry. If you're able to like vertically keep them up like this, if you have like an elastic that can hook onto something or whatever, cause that way the water comes out of the bristles. 
I think if you're putting water back in, it can be a little bit damaging. But again, like, I don't do anything special. I've used these for years, so I lay them flat. Lay them flat. <laughs> Thanks, Erin. Another fantastic tutorial. You're welcome, Lisa. Thanks for coming again. Man, gee, I don't know. I use craft brushes. One pack comes in different sizes of paint brushes. You can get them in Dollar Store in Ontario, Brampton. They're very cheap. Yep, Manjeet, I know a lot of people have grabbed their brushes from the Dollar Store. Uh, the only thing I know is that some people say the $1 brush pack versus the $4 brush pack. Big difference, because the Dollar Store, you know, it doesn't have everything for a dollar anymore. So spend a couple extra bucks, and I think it's apparently worth it, according to who I've talked to. So. Walmart also. I've heard Walmart has great little uh, packs of brushes. Uh, Mish, who I don't believe is painting with us today, she's told me that she bought like a 15 pack of brushes and it came in a nice little case and everything. It's very fancy looking. It was like 15 bucks. I think it was about a dollar a brush. So, very cool. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Natalie. Thank you. You're welcome, Carol. Okay, haha, I will stay with my bar. So, yeah, I think that works. It's same, yeah, just kind of rub it in, rub it in your palm. It's great. Sounds good. Perfect. Pro tip, when you don't have chopsticks, just turn your paintbrushes around. <laughs> you sure about that wood? Uh, <laughs> see that tip there? <laughs> My poor sushi would have all these uh, flakes of paint on it. <laughs> Maybe I just need to do a better job at washing them. Now that's some texture. Jules, you love it. My background looks like a basket. Yeah, that's kind of what I thought of it as, like a wicker basket. I was kind of talking about weaving or... Um, uh, what did I say before? Just cross it, crosses, cross stitching kind of? All of that stuff. Yeah, it's very neat. Again, texture, it's all that texture. <laughs> yep, Snoops is here. <laughs> Highlighted snowman. Sushi, no, no. Oh, I miss sushi. I haven't had sushi since the pandemic, I don't think. Since March. I used to go all the time. Uh, I can't find the reply. Oh, Barb. Um, let me see here. I'll pin the comment, okay? So by pinning the comment, it should move it, I think, to the bottom or the top of the chat. There it goes. So on mine, it's on the bottom. It says pinned comment. You can click the uh, link there and it will bring you there. If you still can't find it, Barb, send a private message to the Facebook page and I'll directly link it to you. Nancy, here's my result on mixed medium paper with different background and colors. Thanks for the session. I can't see a photo, Nancy. It might be because of my live chat. It's a little different, so maybe I'll see it after. But thanks for sharing. It's me before Natalie. Yeah, it was a little higher up bar, but I, I pinned it now, so it should be on the bottom here. I'll even, uh, I'll give it a like. Maybe it'll pop up more because of that. I don't know. Facebook's funny. I liked the comment. There we go. I liked my own comment. <laughs> I'll be doing this one tonight after my grandson leaves. Love it. Beautiful, Connie. Again, you'll probably find it on Facebook if you're doing it tonight. I haven't been super quick at putting them to YouTube recently, but I plan on uh, getting them all back up on YouTube after. Either way, it'll be one or the other. So check both spots. You'll find it in one spot. I don't leave you hanging in the meantime. So have a look. Sushi. I sent mine via Discord. Perfect! Yeah, if anyone on Twitch or anyone who wants to use Discord wants to send on Discord, I've now made that sharing area as well. Excellent. Oh, Subly, there's even, uh, you said Discord DM. If you want, there's a channel where you can share your art on my Discord uh, community as well. So feel free, otherwise I'll check out the DM soon. Got it now. Perfect. Glad, Barb. Okay. Alright, double checking. Are there any last minute questions? Any last minute, like, issues? Need me to repeat anything? because I do have my 2.30 activity. Again, as a reminder, if anyone wants to see me um, struggle with following along with the Bob Ross tutorial, the audio only, I'm gonna be doing that in about 10 minutes with a friend. Uh, as a reminder, while I still have you, post your photos. I'm going to navigate back to the Facebook event page. Again, I'm sorry if it causes us to be jittery for a quick moment, uh, but I'll unlock the permissions. So if people wanna post their photos, they can. And I encourage you to. Everyone always loves looking at what everyone else did as well, so it's always nice to share. So I'm gonna do that so that you're able to post. Uh, Facebook, I know people have asked again about tipping me, so if anyone wants to um, support me today, I put some links to an Interact e-transfer and a PayPal, I believe. Yes, both of those are there. 
Again, never obligated, they're never expected, they're just always appreciated, so they're there if you want. Thank you, I'm only doing it because people keep asking. Um, but honestly, yes, it is nice to be supported with the free events. So thanks guys for considering, but otherwise, thanks anyway for uh, coming in. More importantly, I'm just happy you're all attending and uh, getting some art in your lives right now, so all good. And you, I watched you on Twitch yesterday. Oh, really? So you watched my paint scraping? Oh, it was so fun. I, I loved it so much. Kelly, thanks so much. Have a blessed day. Oh, you too. Thank you, Kelly. Yeah, I don't know if that inspired you, Inju, you, but I was like, oh, it was so fun. I've watched stuff like that before and it inspired me, so I hope it inspired you by watching. Oh, no, that's okay. Sure, Subly, I'll check it out later. No worries. Amanda was the painting yesterday, the surprise thing. No, I'll show it. A few people are asking now. Let's see. Bye, Aaron. Thanks for the nice afternoon. You're welcome, Andrew. I'll see you again, I'm sure. Yesterday was, uh, I was scraping paint on a big canvas. I'm just gonna move that over. Yeah, it's so big. It's huge. I did this for about six hours yesterday. Uh, yeah, and it was like a replica of one of my smaller ones that I did. I've done a few little scrape paintings on uh, 16 by 20 canvases, but I watched it for hours. Yeah, I, I'm the same way as you. If I tune into an art stream that's soothing like that, I'm just like, oh, <laughs> I'll like cook at the same time or do some sort of uh, cleaning or, or whatnot, but I'll keep the stream on and watch the progress. I'm hoping, I, I got the video off of Twitch, I'm hoping what I can do is do it into a little speed video where I do like a 30 second time lapse. If I'm able to find out, yeah, if I'm able to edit it, which I think I can, I would love to show the process in a quick little sped up video because it's really satisfying to see it all come together in like 30 seconds. So yeah, I'll be hanging that up. That's, that's huge. Those are two 16 by 20s in the background for reference there. I was looking for brush link and cannot find it. What's the set name? I can have a look at Amazon. Uh, Terry, it's pinned at the bottom here and um, I'll open it up again to, sh to do it. It's called the Princeton value set. There's just a lot of value sets though, so I'll get you the exact name right now. <coughs> Excuse me. And I need to open up the event page too. Life, I'm just wrapping up and then we're starting up. Yep, that's what I did, cool. Barb, thanks so much. I'm gonna buy a larger canvas to do this one. Awesome, have a good afternoon, you too. Barb, that's gonna look so cool on a larger canvas. You can even do more flowers, but I would just blow up the flowers, make them even bigger. I was paying yesterday the surprise. Oh yeah, Amanda. So uh, Amanda, the surprise thing is happening in like seven minutes here. Love it, but I know you said you were doing a surprise thing. Yeah, so um, again, just to keep encouraging people. Hold on one sec. Uh, who was that? Terry, right? Yes, Terry. It's called Synthetic White, Synthetic White Taclon Real Value Brush Set 5 per package. Are you on Twitch right now too? I can link it there as well if that's easier. Here Twitch, here you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> See it right there? That's the one. It's a .ca link. I'm sure you can find it in America too. I'm not sure where you're located. Amanda, what we're doing in about six minutes, <laughs> Life Smells Nice, the one you see in the chat there, she and I will be following a Bob Ross tutorial step-by-step -step using audio only. It's going to be chaotic and fun. You're welcome, Susan. Screenshots. Oh, McSnoopies. No. <laughs> so that's coming up, Amanda. If you want to tune into that, it's going to be quite funny. I think a, a lot of people are tuning in right now because they know it's starting soon. Look at that. <laughs> Milk break. Yeah, I gotta get a drink of something. I might I might grab a salad real quick too, life. I'll bring it over. Oh yeah. Yeah, wood brings up a good so this was that's Wood's idea, and then this kind of spawned into something completely different. Wood, I feel like you missed that. <laughs> we Life and I were chatting and like I think we totally forgot about the idea that we'd be like singing or rapping along to stuff. Maybe that's for another time, or we could just ring it, wing it, as you said. Okay, Facebook, you've quieted down. I think you're all set. I'm going to end the stream off for you guys, Facebook, and again, it'll be viewable um, on my videos tab immediately if you need to go back and look at anything, okay? I don't have another tutorial posted yet, but you can expect one coming up in the next day or two to be scheduled in the next day or two, probably for my usual Friday or Sunday or 
Saturday type thing. So you'll have some time to plan. Okay. So look out for that. Um, as usual, that'll be posted on Facebook. Okay. So I'll see you at the next one. Maybe I'll see you on Twitch in a couple minutes. Who knows? Okay. Have a great day, everybody. Stay safe with the thunderstorms and all that. Bye-bye.